And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Geek Watch, the one and only show that is that is on all things geek, unconstrained, uncensored, and complete and completely full of loose fucking cannons. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have two of my good brothers here here in the temple. We have the flamboyant flyer, the living Wikipedia, and the man who has to end every sentence with "Yes, sir." Good brother Flutter. <laughs> And we have the man who is taking over your anime one show at a time, the man, be- the man behind the glasses, the man who is cur- who is currently one week removed from digitizing himself as 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 if we're in as if we're in one of my old cyberpunk novels. Good brother Shades, <laughs> how are we doing today? <laughs> doing fantastic. Yeah. So. Yeah, doing great. As you all can see from from the screen, this week's topic is what I am calling the Brotherhood Effect. Now, as far as why I'm why I'm calling it that, because as you once upon a time, of course, there was an there was an anime called Full Metal Alchemist. It was on half of the covers for New Type USA back back in the day. I end up enjoying it. I have both I have both of the PS2 games. Crimson Elixir is better, mm-hmm. and even and that one was remarkable for a specific reason. A lot of times, and shades, I'm pretty sure you can attest to this. Whenever a um, whenever an anime adaptation is made on a manga that's currently in production, the latter half of it tends to fall off a cliff. Looking at you, Gonzo <laughs> Helsing. <laughs> um, and Lord and Lord knows how many others that only got twenty six episodes, and that and that even though the manga kept going, um, or more episodes. Hi, Shaman King. Oh, yeah. And some sometimes you sometimes you end up with the, with the anime writers having to completely improvise, um, which is why which is why I mentioned Gonzo Helsing, or you have or you have situations where they where they um play play the game of kick the can down the road. Hi Naruto, how you doing? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh, and bleach step into the fucking millennium. Um, and bleach too. Not, not so much when it comes to bleach. They did a few filler arcs, but they weren't as egregious. No, Naruto is the is the more notorious of the bunch. But if I may, considering this is my territory, we're stepping into tonight. Go ahead. <laughs> so yeah, that all happened, and and Full Metal Alchemist was one of the better shows in that regard. There. They did deviate from the manga, but they did tell a rather decent story overall, and it was actually rather enjoyable. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't good enough, because a few years later, out came Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, a total retelling that actually stuck to the manga, with the only caveat being the first couple of arcs kind of got rushed through because they figured, they assumed, and admittedly rightfully so, that anyone who was watching it has already seen the original. Mm-hmm. So they kind of bum-rushed the first couple of story arcs and then jumped right into the new shit. But this started a trend in anime where a lot of anime started coming out with remakes mm-hmm. uh, that basically were more focused on recreating the manga entirely now that their runs were completed. Uh, examples that I can think off the top of my head are stuff like Sailor Moon Crystal, Fruits Basket is the more recent one, and a couple of others. Orphan. Orphan, yep, that one's getting that one's starting to come out as well. So yeah, we're starting to see a lot more of that mm-hmm. in recent years, which is actually really exciting. But that does beg a very specific question. And the and that question is, what a, what else could probably go do with a second chance? As these were now, I do want to, I do want to take a moment to cover my ass for a moment. Because a lot of t- I have been very critical of um, of certain studios getting a little too aggressive with remakes, especially here, especially here in the states. Hi, Disney. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> like Di- Disney wants this, and I'm pretty sure somebody will say two two words: the Mandalorian. I'll say I got six words: fuck you and suck my dick. 
<laughs> no disrespect to the Mandalorian, but but one show does not a redemption make. Mm -mm. Because nope. all the because <laughs> name me one name me one good live action adaptation of a previous Disney film. I'll wait. <laughs> Take your time, I'm early. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot with a lot of the the reason why I'm a little I'm a little um nicer to 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 these second chances when it comes to anime as opposed to the uh, Disney stuff or the like is for a lot of these since it's th since it's them trying to tell a tell a closer adaptation of the original manga now I will make the caveat that I haven't seen the remake of um fruit ba fruits basket so I can't comment on that one I can at least I've seen the first season <laughs> um <That's... laughs> How how did it turn out? Honestly, in terms of story, it was pretty much a uh, note for note to the original, only because, well, they pretty much covered the exact same amount of story. They just added a few things here and there. Where the first season did really good was in the visual department, as, good God, this remake looks freaking gorgeous! Who, who animated it? Uh, I believe... Uh, I have to double-check this, because I actually did review season mm -hmm. one. Over on my show, uh, cheap plug is cheap plug. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, let me see, because I remember I actually wrote this down. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, I hate when I have to re remind myself of everything here. Uh, well, the original was done by Studio Dean, but the remake was done by Studio TMS. Ah, Which, that, that, that makes that sense. Is TMS, when it comes to animation, does not fuck around. Mm -mm, no, uh, no, no. They, They've got quite the history. I mean, they worked on the original loop on the third, for fuck's sake. And Batman. And Animaniacs. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and and Little Nemo. Yeah. They've they've got they've been they've been around and they've got and they've got quite the pet they've got quite the pedigree going back years. Um, now as for now. As far as um, Crystal, since that's since that's one of the ones that's br that's brought up on the on the screen, I will note that um, Crystal from Crystal for me is a mixed bag. It's it's one of those cases. It's one of those cases where I feel like it goes too fast and too slow at the same time. And yeah. the big the big problem that the big problem that it had was getting off on the wrong foot because the TV run of the first season. It was very clear it was rushed. There were some very blatant animation gaffes that um, <laughs> I'd imagine would cause an editor to have a heart attack. <laughs> they did get be now. If you're wa if you're watching this from say from say the Blu-ray version, a lot of that got fixed, kind of like the kind of like the TV version of Monica versus the Blu-ray version of it. Yeah, but um, the part of, part of the pro part of the problem is. Is to, is um Takeuchi's art style do, is one of those art styles that doesn't quite match up when it when you're trying to put that into um into th into anime. You know, some there are some and there are some there are some styles that can work, some styles that can't, and um, given shoujo's fascination with watercolor like effects. That's something that's a little harder to convey in animation. Mm hmm Yeah. I, yeah. I yeah. But I still would say that in terms of pacing and story, I still hold it at least somewhat above the original anime because, well, the original anime was basically nothing but an episodic shonen style anime. And what? And while it, cer while it certainly had some good moments with within that, there there is also the fact that. Like a lot of anime from the '90s, the original cheated a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, stock footage, my old friend. Yeah. Look, I, I'm not gonna hold. I'm not gonna hold it against against that one specifically, simply because it was the style at the time. <laughs> yeah, Maddie, there's my there's my requisite Simpsons joke for you. <laughs> um, like if I was if I like I, I love Orphan to death, and it, and it's just as guilty of re, of reusing cells. Like I said, this, 
anime st anime cheats a lot when it comes to animation. Um, there's yeah. a reason why it's all, there's a reason why the term sakuga is a thing, and if you don't know what that is, look it up. Yeah, exactly. Flutter, that but is not an invitation. It, it, <laughs> but the, the other thing, reason why I had an issue with the original, and it's an issue I still hold to this very day, is that it wasn't just reusing uh, stock footage, but a lot of times the plots were very much the same. I actually, a long time ago, many, many years ago, back in the old days of Anime Takeover, me and our buddy Star did a review of, an, of, Sailor, of the original Sailor Moon. And one of the points I made about this was that you could literally break down like 80% of the episodes into a very specific structure and every episode on almost every episode aside from like the major plot based episodes fit this mold. It was girls set up to go off to do this kind of thing or meet somebody or go do an event said event or person just happens to be what the villains are getting ready to either steal energy from or find the MacGuffin of the week. They, they create a monster out of it. The girls get their ass kicked at first. Tuxedo Mass shows up and gives them some encouraging words. The girls use all of their attacks at once, kick their kick the monster's ass, save the day, and we all live happily ever after until the next episode. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, the live action adaptations guilty of this in some regards. I would rather I not talk about the live action version. I'm in, I'm in a good mood right now. Plus, this is a um, topic on anime. We Fair already enough. had the live action. We already had no. the live action talk last week. I was thinking. Fair enough. Moving on. But yeah, yeah that's on. One, that's why I give Crystal just a little bit more credit because at least it tried to stick to the story beats and didn't go to that formula too often, mm -hmm. if at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, gr now, granted, it did. Now, granted, there were there were some mom there were some moments of repetitiveness, but. Um, Look, the if I take any solace from if I take any solace from this, it it was the fact that the ret the return of the return of Sailor Moon was enough was enough to get was enough to get um <laughs> a a certain tabletop dev off his off his ass and actually start creating things again. <laughs> um, but and more and of course more recently we've we've um, got the announcement that Shaman King is getting this treatment and given that. And with that in mind, with that in mind, and the fact that there's the possibility that um, the um, Thousand Year Blood War arc might actually get animated when it comes to Bleach, as I as I've often said, once is an anomaly, twice is a coincidence, thrice is a pattern. And plenty of time, plenty of times, I had heard the phrase "the Brotherhood treatment." Being brought up in for in forums or streams or, or the like, and thus the t and thus the topic title for this week, the Brotherhood Effect. Now, obviously, there's already been a hand there's already been a handful that have been tried again, and this this whole concept of rebooting is nothing new. Hell, we had we had it in the early two thousands with um with my favorite iteration of Bubblegum Crisis, and I'm pretty sure Maddie's favorite as well, Tokyo Twenty Forty. Oh yeah, he won't shut up about that show. <laughs> um, there's, uh, and of, and of course, there's there's been the there's been the fact that there that um one of this one of these sleeper super robot entries over the last few years that um got that got a that got a second run was Koset Kotetsu Shin Jig, which um, oh, yeah. was that. was about, kind yeah. of a reboot and also kind of a sequel. Yeah, because the original Kotetsu, the, the original Jig shows up at one point. Well, th well, that and 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 just does the whole. Hey, there's no air. I don't need it. <laughs> um. But the, but I'd say but even though this pro even though this isn't exactly a new prospect and hell we we had a very famous we had two. Famous exa examples when it comes to the um, holy trinity of ma of manga, in the form of um se of several uh, a couple a couple of um Ishinomori's old, old works or Ishinomori adjacent works getting getting um reboots in the form of um Cyborg zero zero nine which that one was pretty good um 
and I don't know about you, but I really liked the Kikaider anime. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, that's going from toku to, to anime, but it's still, but it's still on it's still on this general theme. And of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up Astro Boy. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, which arguably was a little more actiony than the original, but the original was way back in the '60s, so <laughs> kind of hard to pass judgment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Even if the whole arm cannon thing wasn't something that Astro originally had. Um, but as I was going through all of these, it ended up getting me thinking, what other series could do, could do with, a, with a second chance or a uh, second go of it? Doubly so if they ended up getting a raw deal in one, in one form or another in their initial anime runs. And... I want. I do want to note a bit of a side thing when it comes to um, anime that kind of phoned it in at the end. The one exception to the rule that I'm going that I'm going to note is Trinity Blood. Ah. Because with Trinity Blood, there was the problem with that one was the author the author of the um, series passed away before before yeah. the anime had even started. Mm-hmm. So that that one was going to be up against a wall no matter what. In fact, it's in fact it's impressive that Gonzo was able to get so much out of it. But the I'll I'll open with I'll open with one example that I can think of because this is going to be the big one and I am certain that fans of the of the original film are going to call me a blasphemer for this, which I can just I can just add to the long list of of things that I've apparently um, done geek blasphemy over, and that's Akira. Ooh, Ooh. <laughs> because so show of hands, who here has read through or owned at least one volume's worth of those giant ass Ak- Akira volumes? Not I, samurai. Neither, neither I. I have gone through all six, and um. Now, don't get me wrong; the original film is a classic. I will not dispute that for one second. But the manga hadn't finished, but when the when the movie was in production, and because of that, they adapted the first two volumes and then bits and pieces of the last. Um. And given and given all the things that are different in the manga compared to compared to the anime, I I honestly think a I honestly think making that a um two or three mo- or three movie series would be would be a nice thing to try. I'd cer- I'd certainly be more willing to go for that than go for a live action version. Which um, you know, I'd like to rip into that if it ever happens. <laughs> seriously, how seriously, seriously, how long has that been in development hell for? I can't even. I've lost count. I think it's been. I fucking lost count. I think I heard. I think I first heard about that about an attempt to try and make it in two thousand eight. Ooh. And then, yeah, and... Ar- and around that same time, there was talk of a live action Cowboy Bebop. Both of them are in development hell. And I know there's Cowboy the whole thing Bebop with the come Netflix- close, but. <laughs> I know there's the whole thing with the Netflix Cowboy Bebop, but um, I haven't. That's heard been that. running into so many problems that it's doubtful that it's ever going to get released at this point. Mm-hmm. Even if it does, I wouldn't exactly hold my breath on it being anywhere near as good as the original. Neither would I. It's not like Netflix has a, has a um, decent track record when it comes to doing live action adaptations of anime. Hi, Death Note. <laughs> you know, you could have fixed that problem if you just released the Japanese um, Death Note adap- live action adaptations because those didn't suck. Yeah, I should know. I've watched the original adapta- the original live action Death Note movie, at least the first two. Mm-hmm. Never saw uh, never saw the third one, but then again, that's just kind of its own thing. Anyway, 
But yeah, I do. I do th- now. Obviously, um, the only pro- the only problem with trying to do- with trying to do it is that it would be very expensive. Because unlike a lot of anime, Akira was animated on ones, and Shays, I'm, I'm Flutter. I'm not sure if you're familiar with, with that concept, but Shays, I'm pretty sure you are with the idea of animating on ones or animating on twos. Actually, I don't think that one. I don't think I've heard that before. It's a it's base it's basically an issue of frames of animation, and how how, uh, many, I get how many unique drawings you're doing because the the gold sta- the gold standard is twenty four frames per second. Um, I know I know some try and shoot for thirty or sixty, but um, that that's been the gold standard when it comes to filming. It's the same it's the same frames per second standard when it comes to live action filming. And anim- and animation is going to be no different. If something is animated on ones, that me that means that means one that means one unique drawing for each frame. Um, you see this a lot with an- with animated films that ha- that have a decent budget. Animating on twos is usually is usually um two is usually um one drawing for two f- for two frames. Mm. So that that's the reason that's that's one of the many types of shortcuts that you'll see animation studios do, because in if in order to do um in order to do animated on ones, obviously you've got you've got to do thirty unique drawings for every second of animation, and on a TV right. budget that is not feasible. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> And Akira was very much an- was very much animated on ones, not on twos. And it's one of now, as far as how I can tell that it's not something that I can qu- that I can quantify. But it's one of the things that once you see how thi- how things move, you can tell. It's an mm. issue of um, fluidity. Like there's a d- if you look at if you look at an episode of say Gargoyles, and you look at an episode of um, uh, of say DBZ. You're gonna see this. Di- you're gonna see this difference in fluidity. The only mm-hmm. time that changes is when is when they is when they decide to put all the animation focus into a certain scene, i.e., the Sakuga moment. Yeah. And because and um because of how detailed Otomo's art style and the inspirations that Otomo um was drawing from, namely Mobius. Which he's at, which I think Otomo outright admitted. Doing so, doing something like a doing something like an Akira re, an Akira remake that's closer to the manga is going to be very expensive. Oh. Yeah, it is. Uh, Sh- Shades, I know I know you had uh, put up a list in front of you. What were what were a few of the ones that that um pro- that popped to mind for you? Well, right off the bat, the one anime that I think more than any other that has probably been called out for needing a remake, and I wholeheartedly agree with this, Soul Eater. Yeah. That anime was so good, but that ending just flopped so hard. Now, it's been a while, it's been a while since Soul Eater, but was, was it a similar case of the, the manga hadn't finished? Yes. So it, it, and I think that, let's see, I'm trying to remember, I think that was, was that animated by Piero? They sent, they seem to, seem to do a lot of show, of shonen anime. Yeah, I believe that was Studio Piero. Um, which will, Piero, um, Studio Piero, that name will always make me laugh because Piero is French for clown. <laughs> which I believe actually is their, uh, symbol, is their logo. Well, at least they're right on the joke. Actually, no, 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 no. This wasn't um, done by Studio Pro. This was done by Bones. Oh. In th- in that case, I'm surprised it didn't follow the Bones formula. You know, really good at the beginning, really good at the end, Matt in the middle. Yeah, no. No, the, the ending, this was a case where the ending actually, well, the middle was still kind of mad, but it wasn't bad by any stretch. Mm-hmm. No, the ending flopped hard because it went anime only and it tried to bum rush the conclusion of the story, and it was painfully obvious when it did. Oof. 
Yeah. Yeah, I that's something I can de that's something I can definitely um I can definitely see. Um if if it ended if it ended up di if it did end up getting a um a do over um for, first off would you still would you still would you still have um bones on the short list to try and redo it I think bones has the chops to pull it off like mm -hmm. bon they're not a bad studio by any means and the animation quality was really good for its time mm -hmm. I mean obviously but compared to today's standards it doesn't hold up as strongly but it, for for a series that came out back in 2008 2009 that wasn't as bad so I think and they've improved a lot since so I think they could do it well as far as animation style um I think it's I think it's a case of having having a interesting art style will always will always carry you even even when the animation techniques get dated yeah exactly I mean in studio bones like to even mention what kind of pedigree these guys got, uh, I'm just gonna sum it up in three words: My Hero Academia. Yeah, I was thinking the exact same thing. Shades was like, <laughs> well, look if look if we were to go if we were to go out on some of the on some of the top tier et entries that they've done over the last twenty years, we'd be here all day. Fair point, but yeah. So to say that they could do it is yeah, I don't think that's much of a stretch. <laughs> okay, okay. Second question. You, now, since we mentioned earlier that Brotherhood kind of skipped through the kind of um, put the first couple arcs on fast forward, do you suppose that they should? Do you suppose that they should do this? That they should have done the same thing, if in this in this hypothetical reboot. I don't. I think at this point you kind of have to start fresh. Brotherhood got away with bum rushing it because it hadn't been that long since the original, so a lot of that was still fresh in people's minds. You can't do that with Soul Leader at this point. It's been over. It's been close to ten years since Soul Leader came out. People yeah, aren't gonna remember that. To, and when it came to Brotherhood, it had only been five years since the since the original had ended. So, and I'm pre I'm pretty sure even less after um, Conqueror of Shambhala. Exactly. So a lot, uh, that series was still very fresh in people's minds when Brotherhood was announced. So it could afford to bum rush those first two arcs, but Soul Leader ten years later. No, you couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. No. Well, at the at the very least, I hope at the very least, I'd hope that the um that the total number of episodes given is a bit more symmetrical. <laughs> 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 well, and and that's and, and actually one of the other benefits to the current era of anime is the fact that being seasonal, you could go longer with this series. That's something that Fruits Basket is even taking advantage of is the fact that. You don't have to be stuck with just one season. If your show is popular enough, you can definitely, it's a lot easier to get multiple seasons out. And given Soul Leader is still very much talked about today, I'm willing to bet a company like Funimation would easily give them the funding to pull off multiple seasons. Yeah. Um, I just, uh, if, uh, if, if anything comes from it, it just it just means it just means a return. It just um means a return of the gr of the gr of one of the greatest memes in anime history. Foo, foo. Oh yeah, Excalibur. <laughs> Excalibur. <laughs> <laughs> if you have not experienced the, gr the, the the true gravitas, the true glory that is Excalibur from Soul Eater. Correct this error immediately. Yep, <laughs> the greatest, the greatest weapon of all that nobody wants to use. <laughs> <laughs> also, I, no, also, I will say I, this. Um, I, I should also mention this. If we're gonna do Soul Eater, uh, nobody talks about Soul Eater. Not that didn't happen. Yeah, um, that's that didn't that didn't happen, and um. I'm, and a name like that is not symmetrical enough. Yes, I'm going to keep making this joke because I like Death the Kid. How can you not? The guy was a freaking. The guy was so awesome. Come on, so much fun to watch. I remember. I remember show. I remember showing some. I remember showing some of his antics to a friend of mine, and he was about to have a field day when it came to when it came to the whole firing a gun with the with the uh, pinky, and I I and I just said. 
<laughs> Let people enjoy things. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, it's, e it's easy for me to make that thing where I can say, I know where you keep the food. <laughs> <laughs> but, now, when it, now given, that I, given that I've put in one inf and Shades has put in one flutter, what would be your, what would be your, for, what would be one of your picks? Hmm. Now, this is extremely obscure, but I'd say the Witchblade anime that was done in 2006. Because it, it's... I mean, yeah, it's based off of a comic, but the ending is extremely abrupt. And again, with anime being as seasonal as it is now, you could go longer than 24 episodes and actually flesh stuff out properly than 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 it was in the original. I on on paper on paper it's not it's not a bad idea. There's there's one problem though. You would ha you would have to and you would have to in enter an agreement again with Top Cow. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and that and given how long it's been since the the original anime, that might be hard. Um, the time is certainly an issue. The uh, bigger issue is is do, is is um is the top cow thing because you have as somebody who had read who had read the comic for a long time, you have no idea how how much whiplash I had seeing that. <laughs> because I can understand that, especially given Masane, since she's an original character. No, just the whole, the whole thing. Period. Oh, <laughs> the there is uh, there is very very little that the Witchblade anime has in common with the comic, and right, I get the feeling yeah, if someone was going to try this again, Top Cow would be Top Cow would be far more interested in make in um having a more active hand in that. Right. Now I know somebody might say that they try and tone down the fan service. Um, anybody who's read the comic knows that that's absolutely laughable. Yeah. <laughs> Besides, both forms of the of 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 any of the wielders' uh, designs that yeah, the designs of both forms for, that any of the wielders have while wearing the witchblade are meant to be fan servicey, especially for the female wielders. Um. The darkness would like to have a word with you. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> Ugh. But I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that it would be impossible to do. Too impossible to do. And I'd say. I'd say even doing a straight adaptation of, of the comics wouldn't. I'd um. I'd only be okay with it if the if the animation studio is allowed to have a little bit of flair. Because keep in mind. The reason I keep ragging on the Marvel anime project was that they played it too straight. Right. And and actually, if you want to, and I'd argue that when it comes to a when it comes to a Marvel anime, the two the two instances that did it better were um, My Hero Academia. Obviously, I mean because let's be honest, it's friggin' X Men in anime form. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, Hero Man. Although Hero Man mm -hmm. leans a little bit more in the Toku anime um, spectrum. Right, right, right. But it's it's not it's not like it's not like that sort of crossover hadn't haven't happened before because hello Battle Fever J and Spider Man. Spider <laughs> Man. <laughs> I just had I just had to pick on Battle Fever J once more because um, those are even for the even for the era those are some weird ass outfits. Oh they God, are. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's not get too far off the rails here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so another one that another one that com that comes to mind for me, and I will f I will freely admit that this is a this is a long ass long shot. 
Most, mostly because of the mostly because of the fact that I'm me and the and um I lo I love I love me some heavy metal. Let's talk about bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Which I want to make perfectly clear. I am fully aware there is no chance in hell of this ever happening. <laughs> but bastard can be best described as heavy metal meets D&D. &D. Especially, especially given the fact that so before the, before before there was is that a motherfucking JoJo reference for a long time for me is is that a motherfucking bastard reference because so many so many characters abilities and the like were named after metal bands. The main character's name is Dark Schneider. Obviously, and a nod to Udo Dirk Schneider from Accept. His fit, his fit, his signature spell that melts people is called Venom. A nod to the band that basically started black metal. Mm -hmm. The start, the starting town is called Metallicana, i.e. Metallica. <laughs> um, and I and. I can go. I can go on. The only, the only, um, I'd say the only Japanese property that that went fully whole hog into metal like that is Guilty Gear. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. But we only got one set of OVAs when it came to when it came to Bastard, and there's a whole lot more that happened in the manga because the manga gets fucking crazy. And I would I would say that I would it it could be argued that it's a that it's a bit too bordering on Schmentai. Thanks, Nux, for for <laughs> for the modern audience. But um, it was the eighties. What are you talking about? This was in the This was um, yeah. This is early nineties, and to be honest, that there wasn't really too much of a boundary between that. But anyway. But I, but um, given given certain spicy anime that have that have come that have come out in the last few years, I'd say there's still a place. Oh, there is. <laughs> I mean, now if we can have an isekai about boning, I don't see why not. <laughs> <laughs> to be, hey, I'm gonna make an argument there. That was not an isekai. <laughs> if you're talking about what I think you're talking about, that was not an isekai. No, it yeah. wasn't. <laughs> Yeah, I, my that was that was my that was my fuck up. Um, but e but even so, I think I think that there could be a potential place for this for this kind of thing. Um, another one that I another one that I can that I can certainly think of that I do I do think got I do think got kind of a raw deal was Claymore. Ah. Mm. Because with with that one, it just with that one, it um, it just kind of stopped. I have to I have to wonder if there what if if there was some sort of sequel bag at some at some point that didn't happen, but it just it it's not it's not like it was a it's not like it had a um a shit the bed kind kind of ending. It's just that it it just kind of brick walled itself, whereas. In the manga, a lot of a lot of things ended up changing, and a character who, for a large amount of time, was seen as useless actually got better. He did, he did the he studied the school of Dark Souls and got good, <laughs> to the point where he became one of the few humans who could actually take on a Yoma by himself. Whew. How you say? Um, obviously he t obviously he. He did it the same. He did it the same way that somebody like Guts does. Because there's only one way you get into Carnegie Hall. You know that, right? Practice. 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 <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. And I know. I now, granted, a lot. A lot of the entries I can think. I can think of are from that um, early 2000s era, where there, where there was the mindset of you've got 24 or 26 episodes, and that's it. Um, I'd say, and I'd say, another the one, the 
I know that um, Hunter x Hunter is cur is currently popular, and some some people had posited the notion that maybe maybe um, Yu Yu Hakusho deserves an deserves another go at it, and I'd say no, because in that particular case, they did every they did everything that they could have. And hey, Zena, you made it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, going from a from a birthday celebration to a geek watch. What can I say? It's been a really good day. <laughs> well, tell you what. Why don't we move on to it? Because I've got a couple picks on on, on my list for this, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna let you guys decide which of the two picks I'm gonna bring up. All right. I have a mecha series, and I have a shoujo comedy series. Which one do you want me to do? Mecha. Mecha. <laughs> In that case, I will sum this up with one simple phrase. Cast in the name of God, ye not guilty. Oh, big O. Oh, oh boy. Time. <laughs> you know, it's f the f the thing that I find funny about big about Big O is that that I'd I'd say that more than anything else was I'd say well, let me rephrase that. That alongside Cowboy Bebop. Um demonstrated the viability of a, of a non-Japanese audience. Well, and they really, really demonstrated it, because if there hadn't been an American audience, uh, the second half of Big O would never have been made. And you know what's funny about that? Both of those shows had the same VA as their star. <laughs> Steve <laughs> Bloom, God Among VAs. Indeed, indeed. I've had the pleasure of meeting the man. Definitely as awesome as he as he appears. Mm -hmm. But because this big now, um, obviously there was the censorship problem with um Cowboy Bebop, and it all and it almost only went about thirteen episodes. Um, but in in the case of um the Big O, from what I recall. Big O did not do well at all in Japan. Mm -mm. Large, was... I, largely because of the fact that the mech designs were the polar opposite of what people were asking for in the 90s. Yeah, they were big and lumbering and, and, uh, and very tanky and powerful, but mm -hmm. not really dynamic. No. And, yeah, and the 90s were the era of the Gundams, basically. That was when Gundam was probably at its peak. Mm -hmm. And that was where it was, you know, they were human. They were a lot more humanoid, a lot more agile, a lot more, you know, quicker. Well, well keep, in, keep, in keep in mind when it comes to Gundam, I think, I think one of the inspirations cited was the, um, ar was the armored division in Starship Troopers. And ori the original mm. um, designs for Gundams were going to be a bit more like power armor, which is kind of mm. reflected in how the cockpit is designed. Yeah. Yeah, the linear chair. Mm -hmm. Well, the original cockpit was very, very complicated if you go back and look at the RX-78-2. But uh, it, further cockpits were given the linear chair, and you can see the epitome of that in Unicorn. Mm -hmm. But yeah. In Big O, all of the gun, all of the the mecha were uh, large, slow moving, uh, mighty glaciers, as the as the um, the saying goes. Stompies. Uh, yeah, and their dynamics wasn't in the interaction. Their dynamic was just in some of their more spectacular attacks. Can anybody say Chrome Buster or you know the Piston Punch? <laughs> no. I think I, end, I think I ended up use I think I ended up using the piston punch as some as somebody cybernetic in a shadow run game once. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Loading a pile bunker into a cybernetic arm wouldn't be hard. Mm -hmm. No, but yeah, it, but what it wasn't even. What's funny about Big O, looking back, is that really in, at the end of the day, the mecha action was kind of second hand. It wasn't the main attraction for that show. It was the mystery. The, the, the mystery of the domes, the mystery of what happened to the world, a all of that. we still don't have all the answers to because the lore is complicated as all hell. Exactly, which is why I definitely feel that if there's any show that deserves a second chance with a, with a Brotherhood reboot, it would be Big O. Well, 
if I remember correctly, the original writer for Big O said that what he had written is what was intended and that there that some things are just better left to mystery. True, but there were so, there you could still you could have still given us some answers without giving us all the answers. That's the fun of it. Yeah. What we There do was still know, a lot more they could have given us without giving us everything. Oh, definitely. What we do know is that the Bigs were originally war weapons. Mm -hmm. That uh, Paradigm City is quite possibly either the last remaining uh, experimental city. Because we know that there's a version of Roger and a version of Dorothy that aren't the, ver the Rogers and Dorothy from the Paradigm area. From the very, very last episode. Oh, yeah. Spoilers for a, a nearly 20-year-old anime at this point. Yeah, yeah. Statues <laughs> passed. Uh, I, I figured I'd just say it to be nice. I'm being nice today because it was my friend's birthday. How about that? I have excuses. Don't judge me. Don't look at me in that time. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> um, the, uh, the big thing here is, <clears throat> is we, we know enough broad strokes to get the idea that... Uh, Angel being the technically the the, for, the humanoid form of Big Venus because mm -hmm. she's not exactly a pilot. She just kind of turns into it, resets the dome if it needs to be reset. And why it needs to be reset, we don't know. But it has to be reset every so often, otherwise she wouldn't exist. So yeah, there's a lot of mysteries, but we have the broad strokes, and I don't think that the author... Uh, Either they never intend us to find out, or they don't know themselves. They just gave a, They just did broad strokes to make a mystery. When it comes, when it comes now, um, something I do find amusing is the is the origin of the phrase "cast in the name of God." Um, because I, I think I think he had outright stated that the that um the inspiration for that of all things was Conan. Yeah, I can confirm this because I'm looking at the big O wiki right now. Yep. Quote, the use of, the use of cast in the name of God, you know, guilty is a design, as design of series director Kazuyoshi Katayama. Katayama first learned the phrase through a magazine article on John Milius and the Conan the Barbarian series. According to the article, the phrase comes from the swords of executioners in the 17th century. A variation of the phrase, suffer no guilt, ye who wills this in the name of Krom, is engraved in Conan's sword. Katayama liked the sound of it and decided to use it use it as, as the call to arms. I just like better that if it isn't Roger getting into the big O, it says ye guilty and kills them. <laughs> as as we saw with the with a with a certain nutcase who decided to who decided to who decided to try and pilot big duo. Yep. Um and the other, the other thing that I find the other thing I find amusing, of co of course, is that there's frequent um, there's frequent mention of Metropolis. Now, obviously, obviously that would make sense given how everything is set around around um, Paradigm City, and Metropolis means the mother city. But I'm, I probably wasn't the only one who, when I saw that, I immediately thought of the original film, the original film. And you're you're right. I thought I thought of that too. It especially looks like there's a lot of influence mm -hmm. from Metropolis in Big O. Yeah. Now, as far as far as as far as giving it a second go, I this is something that I'd be a bit I'd be a bit hesitant on for one for one specific reason. It would end up being very tempting of a studio to make the Max CG. Mm. Right. Or that's your point there. Or even worse, it would be very, tem very tempting of a uh, of a studio to take a little bit of artistic license and try to make the mechs more exciting. Yeah, I can see your point there. Mm -hmm. And the now, when it comes when it comes to the artistic license, if. Um, Depending on depending on how that's implemented, I'd be willing to put up with it to a point. Just um, don't ma don't make them into um, Gundam or Macross style mechs. I mean, no, it's supposed, it's supposed 
I mean, if everybody's jumping around all over the place, how is it supposed to be a, a shocking deal when Big Duo is able to fly? Exactly. And, and we know that each each of them uh, was intended to be a different a different form of of um, support. We know that the that the O's were the land support, and the duos were the were the air support, and we know that there was a third model that was you know water support, sea support. They yeah. had the, the the all three of the um, all three of that that triangle covered. And get, of course, um, I think when it comes to the third, you're thinking of Big Foul. Yeah. Anyway. Well, if that's the case, and there is one other anime that I was thinking of, that this is a ca- this is another definitely a case of ended before the manga was even near done and had a lot more story left to tell. Oron High School Host Club. Yes! I have, I have, um, when I had, when I had mentioned, when I had mentioned I was doing, I was doing this with a few, um, friends, um, this was one that was brought, this was one that was brought up to me, and, um, I would be, I would be all, I would be all for it, because, yeah, the, ma- the manga definitely, the manga goes as far as to introduce, um, new characters, if I'm not mistaken, it's been a while, so, t- so, um, Take what I can. I, I haven't read the thought. manga, but I've re- I've read up on how it en- how it goes. Couple of things to for this remake. Number one, it would actually be story wise in on pace with the manga because the original anime actually jumped around. Oh, is it oh. one of those? Is it one of those cases of the shuffle problem, which I'll get to another instance of later? Yeah, because yeah, because yeah, there, it jumped around chapters of the manga and even covered like stuff way ahead of time. Before uh, it was ever supposed to get there, so it was all over the fucking place in terms of pacing. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, the ma- anime ended before the manga did, so it never concluded the story. I mean, to be fair, the ending of the anime was somewhat satisfactory, but it could have done a lot better. So I think having another go at that wouldn't be a bad idea. Mm-hmm. I'd be perfectly fine with that. The um, the only. Th- to be honest, I'd say that I'd say this has a I'd say this has a stronger argument than Big O, in the in this regard. Um, the the one the one thing that I th- that I think might be a roadblock is the fact that while it's not exactly dead, the 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 host or maid cafe thing, um isn't isn't as much isn't as much of a wave as it was at that time. Mm-hmm. And it's, cer- it's certainly not dead, and it's certainly not dead in Japan. In fact, I keep finding new no. keep finding new and weirder ver- weirder versions or new or new and weirder restaurants. Thanks, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> um, the sad th- Rick, if you're watching this, the sad thing is I probably would do that steak challenge. <laughs> Oh yeah, I saw that. I saw that the other day. <laughs> the spaghetti one, uh, I might, I might have to bring a few people along. That's too much carb. Yeah. Um. But. When, but um, when it and obviously, now of course, now the big counter argument that could be made is the fact that. In a lot of decent sized um, convention conventions, both both in J- both in Japan and internationally, you still have some version of the maid cafe. Yep. And I know because I was because the last time I was at MetroCon, I was dancing like an idiot at one of them. <laughs> God, da- God damn them for talking me into getting on stage. <laughs> and I missed this son of a bitch. Yep. <laughs> Mother- <laughs> you had a perfect opportunity for blackmail material and you blew it. I didn't even know you were going there, son of a bitch. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like Joseph Joestar, son of a bitch. <laughs> God damn. Uh... But, it, but the thing, yeah, and the other counter argument I would make for why you, why it wouldn't happen is that. If there's any anime series that you will still, to this day, find cosplayed to death, it is fucking Oron. 
Oh, yeah. Everybody still sings both the English and Japanese versions of the opening. Which, mm -hmm. I'm going to say it right now, the English version sounds like shit. It does. Yeah. I've heard it. I've heard it too many times to so, count. And, uh, so now, here's, here's, the que here's the question that, I, that, I'd, that I'd have to ask. Um, would you have the same studio do it or have a different or, or switch? Uh, let me remind myself what studio did Oron, because I don't even fucking remember. Because it has been that fucking long. I mean, I did just review it not that long ago, but it's been a while since I've even reviewed the series. The original anime was done. <laughs> studio Bones. It was Studio Bones. <laughs> studio Bones anime, I swear. Zana, you were here earlier, but the first anime I brought up was Soul Eater. <laughs> yeah, Soul Eater finished way before the manga did. Yeah, we already discussed that in detail, but yeah. That's twice now I brought up fucking anime from... What? What is it with Studio Bones just not finishing their animes properly? The Madhouse Curse. Uh, apparently. But yeah, um... Now I'm starting to wonder if maybe we should, if we would allow Bones to finish it, because they seem to have a bad habit of not doing it properly. Well, I think it has more to do with the fact that these are unfinished properties when they get them. Yeah, um, that's true. Because, because think think about it this way: Studio Bones has also uh, has also done done things like uh, Wolf's Rain, uh, Full Metal Alchemist. Which, you know, this entire episode is named after. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm not I'm not going to I'm not going to put the blame solely on, solely on on Bones as a stu as a studio. I will I will pick on them for other reasons, but th but this ain't it. You know what? Here's I actually I found the problem. It, we keep studio Bones, but we don't use the same director because no. the director Takuya Igarashi directed both this and and Soul Eater. Did he? He's also done uh, Star Driver, Captain Earth, all three seasons of Bungo Stray Dogs. So yeah. he's he's not a hack because I I liked I liked Star Driver and I liked Bungo Stray Dogs. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just I think you know yeah give it get but give somebody else a shot at it. He also directed Sailor Stars, which we well, there's another uh, issue there. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a whole nother can of worms. But I mean, Bones, <laughs> yeah. Bones have been doing really well with manga properties lately. I mean, remember that they are the studio for My Hero Aka. Mm -hmm. Oh, we've already brought that up too. Yep. yep. And and they're doing Mob Psycho 100. So they've been following their their mangas a lot better recently. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say yeah. Keep 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 the, keep it as Bones, but maybe change the director out a little bit. Um. Now, since since I mentioned what I called the reshuffle problem, I should I should go into what I mean by that. The reshuffle problem is when a is when um when doing an adaptation, you're not doing it you're not doing a consistent flow of it. You're just taking bits and pieces from various parts of the manga, even if they, even if they don't make sense chronologically. And this brings me to another case where the the anime was. Eh, but then, but then I end up reading the manga, and I was like, "Why did? Why the fuck did I not get this?" And that is Rosario to Vampire. Damn it, you oh. stupid monk! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Rosario to Vampire, yeah. And having seen a majority of season one, yeah, it drags on. Oh, season one dragged on. Season two was a little bit better, but not by much. But given the stuff that happens later on in the in the manga, including including having the protagonist not be use not be useless, even if it comes at a heavy cost, mm. and the, and the fact that um, it kind of it kind of has a what I call a medica box moment where where the um, genre ends up shifting because. Right. Rosario, as the manga goes on, starts to feel less and less like a harem anime. Well, just remember that uh, Rosario to Vampire was Studio Gonzo, made by former Gainax members and 
I don't know if they were the Gynax members that were all known for Gynaxing. Well, that would certainly, either way, explains a lot. It's Gonzo. They've had a very 50 50 track record when it comes to their anime. I would even, and that's even that's being probably being too nice. Mm -hmm. uh, Von Dredd was okay. Um, Helsing TV was. Helsing TV. <laughs> yeah, we brought that up. Yeah, I, brought I will defend here. one thing and one thing only when Full it comes metal to. Full Metal Panic. I'm, I will not dispute Full Metal Panic. When it comes to. Um, when it comes to Helsing TV, the only thing the only thing that I will defend is the soundtrack because I still have both discs. Oh yeah, the, the soundtrack is fucking man. awesome. My my favorite track from from uh, anything that Gonzo has done is actually from Full Metal Panic: The Second Raid, uh, the song uh, "Shiso," which is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, <sighs> but I that's one that. And now, obviously, given the circumstance, I would be I would be not inclined to trust Gonzo with a second go of it. No, no. Mostly because, like like we've said, Gon Gonzo is the tale of two studios. Half yep. of the time they do really well. Hi, Afro Samurai. The other half of the time they don't. Yeah. I've actually mm -hmm. reviewed an example of this black cat. Oh yeah, one of the earliest uh, reviews that you did in the new in the new run. Yeah, um, that was a Gonzo se series, and uh, yeah, that didn't go very yeah. well. They uh. also did. They also did uh, Witchblade. As um, we as we brought up earlier. Yep. Yep. They did Line Barrels of Iron, which. I almost felt that they underplayed Line Barrels of Iron, um, the strengths to Line Barrels of Iron. I don't know. Maybe they were, maybe they were afraid they were going to get flashbacks to Blue Submarine number six. <laughs> <laughs> They've done all of Last Exile, which uh, is an original work. So, yeah. but uh, I loved Last Last Exile, and and they do really well with their original works usually. Mm -hmm. Um. There was also there was also um, Romeo X Juliet, which is actually pretty good, and we lost Flutter. Mm -hmm. He'll be back in when he's fixed. Oh, he's back. Oh. Yeah, I was noticing an echo. Anyway, Gonzo also um, just to to jump over to other things that I agree with, they did really well. Uh, the anime support for the complete versions of Lunar and Lunar Two. They, they were the one who added the anime sequences. Oh, now now you're speaking my language. <laughs> yeah, they did animation support for Grandia. Um, they've done anime sequences for some of the Blaze Blue games, and uh, this one will tickle you your fancy really well, Monk. Uh, they did uh, the anime sequences for Zone of the Enders too. AKA the best, AKA the best mecha game ever. Yes. I will not. I will not hear any. I will. And I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure somebody's gonna go. But what about Armored Core? Nope. Zone of the Enders is, Two is still better. Zone of the Enders, the second runner, is the best mecha game I've ever played. Mm -hmm. And th that there is nothing that anyone can do to convince me otherwise. And if you try, um, well, Jehuti has a few words for you. <laughs> Those words are zero and shift. <laughs> um. Now, when it comes now, um. I think an, I think another in, another in, another um, instance, and this this one is, this one is a bit reaching for for me, but I but I'd like to see someone try it again, simply so we can have a um, a a kind kind of nail kind of nail down the proper the proper continuity of it. Record of Lodos War. Ah. ah. Lodos War, I have very mixed feelings about. I have a love hate relationship with Lodos. The big, re the big reason why I'm picking Lodos War in this in this instance is because of the fact that there that there there was the there was the original anime, then there was the then there was the more TV anime that went 26 episodes instead of the OVA series, mm -hmm. and then there was Legend of Kristana. And with all of these, you have the you have these little tiny differences between e between each iteration. 
Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't mind seeing someone get get a go at it just so we can just so we can kind of unify all these all these disparate elements. Also, I think I think it would be a nice way to capitalize on the um, on the recent video game adaptation, Deed Lit and Wonder Labyrinth. Oh yeah, yeah. Which, Break while the iron's hot, they say. Mm-hmm. Which is actually a pretty decent game, especially if you like your Metroidvanias. I love Metroidvanias. So. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think you're talking to the right crowd. Yes, yes. I am. It's called yes, it's really. called knowing your audience, or as they as they say on Toku memes, read the damn room. <laughs> <laughs> but oh oh oh, I just had a thought. I just had a series pop into my head that I I almost forgot about. Shoot. Uh, I many of us have jokingly called this series "Flashback" the anime. Oh god, I know where this is going. Oh, Jesus. Tenjo Tenge. I have no argument on this one. Neither do I. Even if I haven't seen the show, oh, I was like, true. Here's the history with me in this series. Long time ago, and I, this was like very early on in the days of my show, I had sat down and watched Tenjo Tenge with every intent to review the damn thing. By the time I got through that series, I looked at myself and going, how the fuck am I going to review this? Because it is literally nothing but flashbacks. For those who have never heard of this series, the only good thing about it is it's Goddamn opening. <laughs> because oh, the opening oh. is a bopper of all boppers. Mm-hmm. And it's Sakuga. Let's let's get that let's get that uh, across too. It's Sakuga is fantastic. It is, but you don't really get the chance to enjoy that all that much because like I said, like it sets up this really interesting story about the gang about this gang warfare and like this guy, the, the main guy, basically getting a chance to go reverse Super Saiyan the way he looks by the end. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you don't get to see that because it spends the entire time in this flashback about the previous leader and how he completely lost his shit. And by the time they finally get through that, which they like, they do like ten episodes of that, go like one or two episodes back to the main cast. And then go back to the flashback for the for the next ten episodes, and then finally they cut back to the main cast where the main guy learns of his his powers, and then it just stops, and you're just sitting there going, "What?" <laughs> and then we're setting up for a fucking tournament arc. Yeah, no, you just you had to give me the PTSD thousand yard stare shades. Why'd you bring up Tenja Tenge? <laughs> Hello, because I'm my old fish, damn it. Because I'm like, I'm right there with you. Why would I have to be reminded of this? But yeah, remake that fucking series so we can actually get a story, a complete story to the damn thing. Especially, especially since from everything that I have heard, the, the manga fantastic. doesn't suck. No, the story. No, the story in the manga is great. And, and you I- know what's scary? This was a Madhouse production. This was not their fault, and you know it. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to blame the director, Toshifumi Kawase, because I am, yeah, or maybe the, the producer, Masao Maruyama, because somebody fucked up. Clearly. There, there... I might be more inclined to blame Kawase, because mm-hmm. Maruyama is one of the co-founders of Studio Mappa, and they do good shit. Mm-hmm. I'd uh, I'd definitely argue it was it was on the it was on the producer's end of things. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I need, I need no 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 no. Oh Holy no! Fucking... <laughs> Flutter, you're gonna laugh at this. Oh no! Guess who the writer for the anime was? Who? Ah, uh, great. Toshiki Inoue. <laughs> Well, I think we oh found our problem. Mm. That explains everything. Mm. Yeah, and the thing with the Noah is that he's is that he's usually good with anime. It's anime <laughs> and sentai that he's usually good with. And oh my what? god, that explains so much. Look, 
I think I think we know. Th- I think we I think we know from me re- from me ragging on um, Kobayashi ev- every single week. And by the way, I'm not going to stop ragging on her. And you shouldn't. Um, oh. That even that even even good ev- every good writer has one bad one in them. Some of them have more. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> oh. Oh. I just saw that. I just I just had to laugh because oh my god. If you could see my face right now, it would be the upside down thinking emoji. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But when it but when it comes to when it comes when it comes when it comes to hit when it comes to Inoue, it's um I'd say I'd say as long he's one of those writers who's fine as long as you keep him on a short leash. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he has the Lucas problem. Got it. Yes. No, 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 no. He has the Russo problem. Yeah, he, he does. And um, given Gosh. how Ga- given how Garo has has used AV actors, I'm surprised he never did any writing for that. <laughs> oh, right. Besides, all like '90s Sentai and. Is did that a lot, and not so much in some of the old ones, but anyway, right? Like well, uh, like more recent ones, but anyway, rails. I'll I'll make this known, then I'll, and then I'll move on from that. You see that you see that a lot with cer- with cer- with certain um, studios, simply because it's a way to keep costs low. In fact, Black Station mm-hmm. did this a lot, which which and because of that, in order to in order to keep the unions happy, they had they would film the sex scenes first, <laughs> just so just so that the union just so that um. The union workers wouldn't wouldn't start raising eyebrows or cause a stink, um, right? But I'd say I, I've ragged on, I've ragged on this particular batch a lot, and I've and I've mentioned wh- I've mentioned why I rag on this, but I I think that Matt I think that Madhouse I would love to I would love to see them tackle um. Tackle Marvel, tackle a Marvel anime project ag- again, but this time add a bit more Japanese flair to it instead of having to play it straight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, and I'd just like to see Madhouse allowed to finish anything. Um, so would we? When it comes, because it's never their fault. It's just like, oh yeah, you don't get the next the next uh, license. You don't get the next uh, the next set of information. Oh, there's just not enough stuff. Well, I bring this up because I have the poster that I got that I got from San Diego Comic Con when I saw this on my wall. But at the time when the Marvel Mad when the Marvel um, anime project was announced, they showed two teasers. One of for Wolverine and Iron Man. The Wolverine teaser um, had a very stylized Wolverine. First off, he had he had much longer hair, which is pro- which is probably going to be blasphemy for some. But it was animated kind of in the way of um, Ninja Scroll, and it was it's very clear that they were trying to do the Japan saga, or at least hinting as such. They didn't in the actual anime, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The Iron Man trailer, or ra- rather a teaser. Did have a bit of an appearance from the Crimson Dynamo, but more importantly, it used what what is known by Macross fans as the Ito Circus. Oh, you mean Itano Circus? Yeah, the Itano Circus. I, I e the Macross missile missile massacre or Macross missiles and laser spam. Yeah. And that that was what interested me about the project, taking Marvel characters but applying Japanese animation techniques. Because Itana Circus is awesome. Yeah, and that now one now I'm pretty sure somebody could argue what why would you do that why would you do that with Iron Man? Iron Man's not a mech. Um Hulkbuster would like to have a word with you. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that he has, you know, tiny little stinger missiles in I was going his, to say Hulkbuster again. Uh, anyway, sorry, sorry, Zan. Anyway, no, 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 that that wasn't. I was just, I'm, I'm sighing at the people who don't realize that Iron Man has so many suits. 
one for just about every occasion, and many of them have lots of hidden weapons that would be directly suited to Itano Circus. Mm. Not to not to mention he not to mention he when I think of Marvel heroes flying, Iron Man is going to be one of the main things that comes to mind. Um, but you but but when it came to the actual when it came to the actual series for both, they and they ended up playing things very um, straight as it, as if it was being as if it was being dictated by by Marvel. um. By some by somebody at Marvel, namely, I don't know, Joe fucking Kusada. Which, by the way, fuck you. <laughs> and you know, it's really you know, it's really really sad about that. We already have examples of Marvel characters with anime esque attack powers. Just go play Marvel versus Capcom two and use any of Iron Man's specials. He's got a giant wave motion cannon. Oh yeah. Or a missile spam rain. Also, here's here's how you win, here's how you win at Marvel versus Capcom two. Step one, pick Storm. Step two, pick no. Sentinel. Step Stop. three. <laughs> Stop. We are not doing Storm Magneto Sentinel. Stop. <laughs> no. <laughs> step three. There is no step three. You've already won. <laughs> The only reason that they were so good was because they could all fly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, fine. Well, 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 you know what? Here's your step three, throwing cable. Oh, you gave yourself a handicap? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is why I find Marvel vs. Capcom 3 just a little, specifically Ultimate version, just a little more... Uh, uh, reasonable because the whole Storm Magneto Sentinel team, while it still does exist, they can't fly for as long, so they can't be exploited like they used to. Um, Fair enough. Anyway, mm -hmm. rails, mm -hmm. rails, rails. Yep. What, what rails? There were rails. What? <laughs> we we might want to give Xanatrix a go here. He hasn't had a chance to pick one yet. Yeah. Uh, no, you know he hasn't. Uh, Xana, anime, lay it on me. An anime that I think deserves the Brotherhood treatment. That is a very hard one because most anime that I watch um, tend to either be things like light novel ad adaptations, and so they're still ongoing. And it's just these 12 episodes covered these three volumes, and it's pretty much a one-for-one -one shot and doing really well. Or they're things that um, told the story correctly. that they, Or... I mean, hell, with the case of Yu Yu Hakusho, they even got more story 20 years later. Oh, yeah, the the Karama and Hie one shot, yeah. Yeah. Um, if I had to say anything that deserved the Brotherhood treatment, the problem is that the studio never finished the, uh, the manga because it went on permanent hiatus. I am talking I know, about I no know. other than X-1999. Yep. Oh. oh yes. AKA one of AKA which even though even those even though some of the changes from from the um surprise surprise this is a madhouse anime um Earthman. <laughs> and once again this is a case where where madhouse had to end it, had to end things abruptly and it wasn't necessarily their fault. Um yeah, so are, the, you um... are you familiar with what was go with what was going on around that time? Not around that specific time, no. Lots of um. There were two of... major incidents that happened yep. right around the time that the finale for the um, X nineteen ninety nine manga were were um going were going to come out before Clamp decided to put it on indefinite hiatus. It's never the, coming out. I don't think they're the ever going to put out the ending. The first was the Great Hanshin Earthquake. Uh huh. Mm. Which what which was particularly nasty even by Japan standards. Um, if and, I'm not mistaken, with, the Hanshin Hanshin area is not too far from um, Osaka. If I'm not mistaken, I'm trying to remember where specifically in, J in Japan Hanshin was. Hanshin uh, industrial region is 
it's right it, it it comes on from the own reading of the kanji used to abbreviate the names of osaka and kobe because they're the two largest cities in in the industrial region so mm-hmm. you know it's it's right there yeah and uh, and um osaka and kobe are they're not obviously they're not as big as tokyo but they're no slouches either um yeah they're huge <clears throat> The Osaka other, special. the other instance, and this, and this, I'd say, was even more. This was even more egregious and more, and caused more controversy um, in in Japan at the time. Were the were the um, Sakakibara murders? Oh, those I've heard about those. The Honshin earthquake combined with the Sakakibara murder uh, murders um, brought a lot of controversy to Clamp because. Uh, a lot of what was happening in X was things like buildings falling down. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of imagery looked similar to earthquake damage, for one. So Hanshin mm-hmm. really happened there. And then, of course, just some of the brutal ways um, protagonists and antagonists were dying. And even some of the side characters. A woman literally explodes to become a sword. Um, <laughs> it covers the entire room in her viscera. And it's 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 drawn in some, in some pretty realistic detail and puts one of the characters into semi catatonia. So oh, Jesus. Um, the, the whole thing about it is all of that came together to where clamp felt that if they, if they released any more material from it, anything else, um, they just, they'd eventually be like reprimanded from a governmental level almost. They right. felt that they, that they would that they would receive some sort of sanctions because they aren't thinking of the social uh, uh, situation, and so they're like, okay, well, we're going to put this on hiatus, and it's been on hiatus now for something like seventeen years. And yeah, it, there, at this point, was there was canceled. an article that Zana had sent me that basically goes into even even if they even if they did finish, the problem is no 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 um finish that they would do would be satisfactory. Unless they did it in a very specific fashion, and that's a story for a different time, maybe off stream. Mm-hmm. So yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But well, the anime was really well done. They did have to skip some things in the anime, and actually, the ending given for the TV version, which was which was made after the movie version which was made even earlier in the manga and oh the i ending... know the movie version <laughs> we don't yeah, talk the about the movie. the movie the movie sucks the movie didn't happen the movie no the movie happened for one reason forever love was forever etched into me as a permanent ptsd shut up <laughs> I, I can't listen to forever love without seeing kamui hugging fuma's decapitated head i can't oh, hear it without oh. seeing it. um but but uh, the TV show was really well done animation wise. Uh, voice acting was super good. They followed the manga really well, and and the ending, the actual ending bits just before Fuma and uh, Kamui fight, uh, are even shot for shot for the most recent releases of the manga at the time, um, which was where Sorata uh, died. And then, and then the manga uh, had the 18.5 um, volume, I guess, technically, where it showed what um, what happened with uh, Arashi before she went over to the Dragon's Worth. Mm-hmm. Also, let, let me. I will. I will note this. If I if if by some miracle I ever I ever got the funds to hire a prop maker, you can bet your ass I'd 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 ask them to make a replica of the Shinken. The Shinken is so fucking cool. I love that thing. It's that also is, gigantic. It's it's gigantic. It's weird to have a two-handed sword with only one part of the hand being guarded, but it is one of my fa- it is one of my favorite swords in any anime. Well, actually, that's a little bit more. Um, I'm pretty sure that part of what the inspiration for the Shinken was was um oh god what's it called the predecessor to the uh, I'll I'll think about it later I'll I'll think about it later 
Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll just I'll just pull us off. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, now put putting putting that as, putting that aside, I will I will ask are there were there in, I one that w- one that was brought up to me. Speaking of clamp, that um. That some that some that some had argued sh- argued should get another chance was um, Subasa Chronicle, and I had said flat out, no. Largely because um, first off, Subasa Chronicle was decade before decade. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll make note of that. But also, the problem with the problem with something like Subasa Chronicle is. You in order in order to really have a grasp on th- on things, you really have to delve deep into Clamp's history. Now, for guys like us, that's not that's not as much of a problem. And I will credit the manga version for at least trying to fill some of the gaps with the um, excerpts in the uh, Del Rey version of the mo- of the manga, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where they put they put in the, they put in this extra chapter at the end of each volume to kind of. Go into the origins of this or that character and what series they're from, what this or that is referencing. Since yeah. a lot of that didn't, co- a lot of that didn't come to the states. But there is there is one that I'd be interested to see some, to see someone try again. Speaking of Clamp, um, who here is familiar with RG Veda? Sounds familiar. nope. Why does that sound familiar? No, I'm not. That was one of Clamp's really early works. It only got an OVA series, and that was it. Um, obviously, you might you uh, and given the oh, name, yeah, it was oh, obviously yeah. drawing a lot from, from um, Hindu mythology. Nigu Veda, the mm-hmm. name of one of the four Vedas. Yeah, but I, I honestly, I'm not saying that I do 24 episodes of that, but I think there's enough in. In Rig Veda to do a um, twelve episode series. I don't know. It has ten volumes. I know okay, it's maybe, a show. Maybe we could do more than. It, I think it could last a, a full season. But as far as far as as far as who would animate it, um, obviously we can't go with the with the initial studio because it's been way too long. But Usagi yeah, and Studio Signal. Yeah. It's, yeah. I'm, I'd say, I'd say I'd say someone a little more con- a little more contemporary maybe I don't know maybe IG Studio IG or um let, let me look at something here if I remember correctly about Clamp Anime um let me see I just want to check some of the some of the other Clamp Anime besides you know X mm-hmm. things like Magic Knight Ray Earth and I liked Ray Earth, but um, I think I think Ray I think Ray Earth Ray Earth um, didn't really have a bad adaptation. No, it did pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it, it even did really well on uh, as a video game. Yeah, um, I think if I remember correctly. Maybe the studio. Uh, I mean, from what I always see here, a lot of what uh, Clamp went to was, or at least what their more popular properties went to, went to Madhouse. Um, Card Captor did. Um, I see here that, uh, you know, obviously X did. Um, and Tsubasa, no, Tsubasa went to B Train. Xholic went to IG, so yeah, maybe we could throw it to IG and see what they do with it. Yeah. XXXholic is pretty good. I would, I would not be willing to trust B Train with it. Um, of course, no. Not. <laughs> I got B. Um, B Train has uh-huh. pacing problems. That's why I said, of course not. Um, like I, th- I think the, I think the only, t- I think the only time I've, and let's, and let's be honest, B the. B B train um, is sending a is sending a fruit basket to Yuki Kajiura every week, (laughs) saying my my sincere my sincere our sincere thanks for allowing us to have a career. Every single week, Yuki Kajiura is getting it is getting it from that because before that, B train were nobodies. Yeah, like the the (laughs) their big claim to fame up until that point was. I don't know. Was doing it. Was doing adaptations for Wild Arms and um, Ark the Lad. 
Mm-hmm. Which there's a there's a deep cut for you. I'm probably one of the few people who even remembers Ark the Ladder, remembers the um anime <laughs> adaptation of No, I I I remember. Um <laughs> And also, it's too far removed to give Ark the Lad a second chance, especially since you'd have to you'd have to acknowledge the fact that the anime that it got was only adapting the second game. Yeah, that was a basically bit, a bit of a drop on their on their part there. Mm-hmm. Um, I know the, again looking among all of the all of the more popular names from Clamp, um, Magic Knight Ray, Earth X, nineteen ninety nine. Card Captor so- Sakura, Chobits, so XXXholic, etc. A lot of their stuff went to Madhouse or Production IG, from what I'm seeing. So mm-hmm. those two already have a tried and true record, are, have already adapted clamp, uh, clamp properties very well. So throwing it to one of those two is, is definitely uh, the probably the best uh, the best choice there. Yeah, I also, I can... as, as a side right. and, and being a, a slightly tongue-in-cheek polit- politicality here. I also love the fact that uh, Clamp is all women, and um, the uh, the eternally offended oh, yeah, that's ever great. point that out. Especially <laughs> since um, Cl- Clamp is n- is not a- is not afraid to do fan service. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's all oh, yeah. it's all for the men. Um, um, <laughs> um <laughs> hey, why do you say that? Ch- Chobits, anybody? Chobits? <laughs> Where is the on switch again, Chobits? <laughs> <laughs> we will never forget that. We will never forget that. But I do have one other suggestion, one other name to throw out there. And this is a case of technically the story did get completed, but I think getting it a touch up and giving it another chance to really like condense everything and maybe change the pacing a little bit might help in this case. Fushiki Yugi. Yeah. Hon- honestly, yeah. AK- AKA the anime that Inuyasha was ripping off. <laughs> yeah, I said it. No, quite me. No, 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 you're wrong there, Monk, because the only person Rumiko Takahashi rips off is herself. Because all Inuyasha is is Ranma one half in the feudal age. <laughs> 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 but yeah, Fushigi Yugi, I mean, the original was okay for its time, but to say that it's aged uh, poorly would be an understatement. <laughs> it is a reverse harem in the guise of a shonen action series. Mm-hmm. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. M-A-O. M-A-O. A, and and, and if you don't it. believe me, why don't you ask Lady K? It's one of her favorite series of all time, and she will even admit that, because it, it is a reverse harem in every sense of the word, but... Good God, some of the fight scenes scream old school shown in action. Also, I just, every time so, every time somebody asks me about, about Fushigi Yugi, I just remember this one WTF instance with um, subtitles that said, what was that? It sounded like a homo being strangled. <laughs> <laughs> Which as soon as I saw that, I did a legit spit take because I couldn't believe that was, that was approved. <laughs> I realized. Yeah, I realized. Like, it's, like that one, it's like that one scene in uh, the the Casey Graham pre arc of Yu of Yu Gi Oh, where Vivian is basically saying to to Pharaoh Atem, if she if he loses this duel, if he, if she lo- if he loses their duel, he'll he'll become her slave. No, that's not as bad. Like if you're Fair if you're enough. gonna bring if you're gonna bring up early Yu early Yu Gi Oh with that with with that kind. Ca- with that kind of WTF, you'd be better. You'd be better off bringing up the panty tank. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that thing! That thing! Oh God! Um, but I, But there's there's of course been those WTF moments when it comes when it comes to subtitles. I think one of my favorite ones is if there's a hole, it's a man's job to thrust into it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Which. You know, in most circumstances, I would shout out phrasing. I don't think I need to. <laughs> no, you don't. Phrasing is not required. There is no. Yeah, that is way past phrasing. <laughs> there's, no, uh, there's no mistake there. Um, he he meant that phrasing very clearly. <laughs> yeah, that's what makes it worse. 
<laughs> phrasing is only supposed to be used when someone says something that could be unintentionally provocative. No, this is exactly. entirely intentional. But there is <laughs> there is one that kind of had an ending, and then and then and then kind of did this um this uh, did a few episodes of fi of filler at the end for a weird for a weird reason that I um I wouldn't mind seeing an, I wouldn't mind seeing someone get another go, especially since its setting was so fascinating to me who here has seen the 12 kingdoms ah I, uh, that's a long series mm. multiple dvds mm. we know we have them all so do i but yeah the, the last i don't know six or eight episodes after 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 our heroine um makes her first act makes her first proper decree I I e com I e completes her arc. We have these two side stories, and it really felt out of place. Like the second the second side story, invo involving another involving another king's um rival. That one had at least a at least a little made a little bit of sense, but the other but. Putting it right at the putting it right at the end after all after all this momentum just felt like whiplash. They kind of tried to tie it back together in the uh, coda for for the last episode, but it was just weird. Mm. And I do th I do think that when you can when you consider that when you consider the politics of that particular series, I feel like there's rife. I feel like there was. Given given how many vo given how many volumes the source material has, I think somebody could could do an, could do with another go at it. And I I, I, I will note that I do think this is one case where Madhouse's talents would be most apropos because if there's any studio who really understands the importance of shading, it's Madhouse. <clears throat> Examples mm. include No Game No Life. <clears throat> Oh yeah. So No Game No Life was my favorite anime of all of uh, all of the previous decade. Um currently Doctor Stone is my is my favorite anime now. Uh but No Game No Life I, 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 I give every chance to throw out there to show how this is what Madhouse can do. Why do why do people not let them finish these things? When it comes to not finishing, um I think I've made it clear that I'm not I'm not putting that on Madhouse themselves. It's why, more of a it's more of a case of just really bad luck. Yeah, that's why I say it's the Madhouse curse, and I, I always go, why don't people let Madhouse finish these things? I mean, we even got a One Punch Man season two that then didn't go to Madhouse. Why didn't it go to Madhouse? Th there must be something going on at Madhouse that's pissing everybody off because it's like. They, they they do such great work and yet nobody lets them touch the season the session after that. It's like, what are they doing that's pissing everybody off? I I can't confirm it, but I had a sneaking suspicion when it came to One Punch Man season two that it was an issue of schedule conflict. So there was a schedule conflict with the original oh, director. Yeah, One the Punch original Man. Director. yeah. With the original director, because the original director, the, the guy who threw his heart and soul into the Sakaga of One Punch Man, which is, you know, the point of One Punch Man, is that yes. Um Yeah, he wasn't available. But but even then, it still should have stayed in Madhouse. If it couldn't have been him, they had other directors that, while they may not have thrown their heart and soul into it, would not have flubbed the Sakuga and made everything seem stiff and gross in season two. JC Steph from from my, from my experience um, does not have does not have a whole lot of um a tr of a track record when it comes to shonen anime, mm -hmm. which is what One Punch Man is. Like, if you look at a lot if you look at a lot of JC Steph's material and count, um, correct me if I'm wrong in that, but I think a lot of it leans more in the drama or even shojo category. Uh, with some quick. with some harem elements, but when it comes to high action material that you'd see in a sh that you'd see in a shonen, they don't have ex they don't have a whole lot of experience. Um, 
Well, no, because like JC staff has done things like uh, Food Wars, which has amazing Sakuga. Oh yeah. Um, they've done a certain yeah, magical it's... index and a certain scientific railgun. Again, fantastic Sakuga. Um, they, they've even you know they even picked up a certain scientific accelerator when it became a thing. And oh. and okay, so while is it wrong to try and pick up a girls in a dungeon might be seen as a harem anime, even though it really isn't because Bell is a bell end. Um, anybody who's watched the Minotaur fight from those episodes knows the Sakuga is fantastic. So why the JC staff, people who have a proven track record on Sakuga, fucking up for One Punch Man? No! Why? Why? I, <laughs> I, I get the... If, if, I, if I can posit one other theory... I would guess that the that the big problem was time. That I can see, um, but let's just let's just cover other things that have huge amounts of sakuga they did well. Uh, <laughs> Slayers, um, Toradora, um, Hayate the Combat Butler. Uh, uh, I I don't need to go any further. If if Jade's, they have all of this, Zen has gone bye bye. Egon, what do you got? <laughs> Shimaneta. <laughs> Shimaneta, a prime a thing primarily about dirty jokes, has better Sakuga than One Punch Man. <laughs> Season two, specifically. Oh. But even but even with even with all that, I'd say I'd say I'd say not I'd say another mate another um. Another major, another major instance, and um, this one, this is one that I can actually see. There's a couple that I can, that I could actually see someone, ha someone having a second go because of because of their status. Um, one of them, and the and the reason I say it is because I'd like to see it um run a little bit closer to the manga. It is one of the rare cases where Gonzo was was actually um calling heads instead of tails. And that is Afro Samurai. Mm. Afro Samurai. Is good. Now, the, now I'm not dis, I'm not disputing how good the how good the original anime was. In fact, it's probably one it's probably one of the darker revenge tales that I've ever come across. Um, and Resurrection was good, but not as good. Um, I think I think because it I think because in a lot of ways it was still kind of a retread. And the uh, video game was all right, but the thing is, all three, all three, both of those and the manga have very different ways on how they get the to the destination. And when it comes to the manga, when it, I that's one that I would I would love I would love to see. Especially, especially since the na the name of the the name of the mountain that the number one is on on in the manga is Mount Sumeru, mm. which is a name that is very deliberately chosen because Su because um, Sumeru is a very famous wuxia idea. Yeah, it's basically the closest the closest point on Earth to heaven. Yep. And, and it's the second, the second largest mountain in Wuxia. The largest, obviously, being those who do not have eyes to see it, mm -hmm. Mount Tai. But the now, the whole, you know, you know the story about the num about the number one. How you're how it's how it's described that you're this you're this untouchable god. Well, in the manga, that was a little more literal. The number one literally is God. <laughs> yeah. At least, in, at least in a Buddhist sense. Yeah. Whereas, in, whereas in the anime, it's just you're, it's just you're the strongest fighter in the world. Yeah. I mean, it's the reason why the last. But even, even then, they kind of acknowledge that. Uh, 
that the number one was sort of godlike with the last fight in Afro Samurai. Mm -hmm. um, considering that, you know, his corpse had been long dead and yet he still almost killed Afro Samurai. Yeah, and it, but it's one, it's one of those things that ca it, um, it goes, they go a little, they go a little further with it in the manga, and that's why I'd, I wouldn't mind seeing it get a second chance. The other one that I'd like, that I'd like to see, an I'd like to see another go that's a little bit closer to the manga, is Trigon. Yeah. Ah. I I love the I love the I love the original anime. I I've I've made that clear since our inaugural episode of this series was on space westerns. Um, mm -hmm. I even I even liked the um, Badlands Rumble movie as a as a kind of getting the gang back to together sort of way. Even if the even if the main villain was. A little bit too close to BDN. <laughs> like, for all intents and purposes, he was BD. He was neon in a um diff in a different coat of paint. <laughs> like he, so, especially with his insistence on ma on make on making sure that his heists are conducted as flashy as possible. So, side note. Uh... Just, just, I, I just confirmed that the director for One Punch Man season two was uh, Chikara Sakurai, who was apparently the the one person that that uh, much of season two was uh, problems were blamed on, and uh, he's also the director for the Shenmue anime now. Mm. Don't fuck up. <laughs> oh, I think just having his name attached to it has already reached that point. Yeah, I'm also looking at some of the other, other uh, things that he's directed on um, on Anime List, and um, I haven't watched most of them, but from what I know of a few of them, none of them are very good. <laughs> hate to say it, but uh, Shedden fans, uh, prepare to be disappointed. Into the trash it goes. It'll need its own brotherhood sequence, uh, brotherhood uh, treatment later down the road. <laughs> it already got that. It's called Shenmue 3. <laughs> yeah, and I heard people. I heard people were disappointed by that too. Yep. Oh, first time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait, how many years for that game, and it flopped. <clears throat> I bl I blame the fact that they decided to, they decided to try and go epic exclusive. Uh, I blame the fact that it just isn't uh, uh, isn't as um. Innovative as it could have been, I heard that it was it was almost too stuck in in the Shenmue uh, rut, and almost like they were um, just kind of pantomiming through the motions rather than trying actually trying. Mm -hmm. I, I I had a couple friends who who were really looking forward to it and played it and said, "Well, it does all the things Shenmue does; it just does them in a way that feels empty and hollow." To be quite honest, I was I was I was kind of iffy about do, about doing a sequel, largely because a lot of the stuff that Shen that Shenmu did and pioneered, um, it's kind of been taken by the Yakuza series and run with it. Yeah, including Q2, QTEs. Yeah, but um, there is there is one big one. For for me, that is that is definitely a case of we need we need to we need to fix what it, what for me was one of the shittiest endings in an otherwise good anime. Oh boy! Oh no! I think I know what's coming. Let's talk about oh, Escaflone. No. Say again. And, <laughs> and right on cue, Doku is late and gay. <laughs> Do you really know what's coming? <laughs> and, and and he interrupted what you were saying too. Yeah. <sighs> I fucking hate Escaflone's ending. Yep. Oh. <clears throat> yep. Oh, I picked such and, a perfect time. And don't say me. don't say that uh, visions of Escaflone was uh, was the Brotherhood treatment because it's not. The manga version is. A completely different, a completely different show entirely. Like yep. they, there is nothing in common. 
between the two of them. I mean, I, I think the best things that came out of Escafoni are the music. I mean, all of the music is just brilliant. I I still have I I still have um Dance of Curse in my playlists. Dance mm. of Curse. I have uh, Dance of Curse and um. God, what was it? Uh, it's the one that's basically saying it in in faux Romanian. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the to to illustrate how much I hate it, the um, there was this. This is gonna be this is gonna be semi related, but there was a scene in um, early on in brutal early on in brutal legend where Eddie Riggs completely completely scoffs off, scoffs off the idea of returning back to his home. Back to his um home, back to his home, mm -hmm. and I'm sitting I'm sitting here thinking if you it that um the whole the whole notion of go of go of somebody in another world go, going back unless they're going back for a very specific purpose I have never been fond of it, and in this case it made absolutely no goddamn sense. Yeah, that's the one premise of any sort of isekai, and let's let's be serious here. Um, Escaplone is technically an isekai. Uh, he told me he's on another planet. Uh, <laughs> um, it's the idea of going home from from being isekai never makes sense unless you know you're worse off in the the new world than you were previous. Mm -hmm. And, or, mm -hmm. you know, you died in your previous world, and now you're in the new one. I, bar I <laughs> barely right. put it. I barely put it up with within the TV series. I put it up with even less in, in the movie version because, um, in the in the movie version, Hitomi was Hitomi was clearly dealing with depression, <laughs> and being in the new world really helped her. Mm -hmm. And then she still wanted to go back. I fucking hate that. But, and on top of that, you know, there's there's always, almost almost always, something special about a person who goes to, who gets isekai'd. It's, you know, it's part of the isekai package of tropes. There's always something special, even if that special thing is horrifying, such as a return from death. Um, <clears throat> the... If I remember correctly, the special thing was that uh, her singing could actually help Vaughn. Mm. There, was, there was that, and um, I believe her. I believe in the series, her her abilities for divination. Yeah, yeah, and so you know, she had special powers in that place that made her an important person and improved her lot in life significantly. What reason, other than I miss my friends and family, do you have to go back? And on that note, El Hazard, uh, specifically the OVA, um, the only reason that the main character Minase had to go back was to fetch Ifurita back from Earth. He's like, I'll find a way to come get you when she... Because it's, it's essentially a semi-stable time loop. Mm -hmm. Small spoilers there. Um, and so she's running out of power on Earth after sending him to El Hazard in the first place, and then he appears with her key to wind her back up and bring her back to El Hazard. He and his friends never return to Earth. All of them choose to stay in El Hazard. And that is a legitimately uh, fantastic ending because all of them got something special about them. Mr. Fujiwara becomes more powerful the less he smokes and drinks. He's the, he's the best character. If he's not drunk and he's not smoking, he's super Fujiwara. Well, if that's when it's drunk. And then hyper Fujiwara when he's not drunk, when he's not drunk or smoking. <laughs> and, and so they, you know, they everybody got powers. Even his quote-unquote rival, um, or the guy who sees himself as Minase's rival, uh, had the power to speak to the Bagram. Like, uh, he could understand them as if they were speaking Japanese to him. Sometimes, uh, sometimes uh, even, even, even instances of Isekai where they don't get, where they don't get powers, but they, have, but they are effectively given a, um, sec a second chance to... to exactly. Um, to have to put to put their own lot to put their own lot in in the world, like like uh, sometimes you sometimes you have you have a case where some where somebody just used these skill just is able to apply the skills that they had that they had on that they had um, on Earth 
into an, into a new context that act, that actually has actually has more impact than it did back then. Kind of light novel for you that that uh, that does that. Uh, how the realist hero rebuilt the kingdom. Um, he has no special powers. He's just a, a, a recently graduated uh, civics student from from Tokyo University who uses it to re revitalize their economy and reestablish their infrastructure and build up the kingdom he's summoned to as his first actions. I'll have to I'll have to dig that I'll have to dig that up later. <laughs> uh, Bookwalker, just go on to Bookwalker. It's it's right on there. It's super good. I love reading it. Yeah. But the point, but the the point is the. I think I think part of the reason I have I think part of the reason I have a soft spot for the for um, something like Escaflone is the idea of a magic themed mech has always fascinated me, and that's something that we really haven't gotten a whole lot of. In fact, the only the only instance I can think of 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 mecha in a fa- in a fantasy kingdom. Where the mechs were featured prominently in that in that same regard was Aura Battler Dunbine. Right here, <laughs> that's the deepest of deep cuts. Dunbine and Ray Earth. Uh, Ray Earth featured their mecha a lot, um, and in the second season, it was almost entirely mecha because they had the technological country and the fantasy country and all the others coming together with all their different forms of mecha. Mm-hmm. And, um. <laughs> yeah, mystic mecha are, are few and far between, especially like you said, deep cut with a Dunbine there. I I wish Dunbine was more liked. It's a really good story. Actually, it's funny you bring up uh, mecha and fantasy settings. Have any of you read? I know it's not anime, so it's a little off. Have any of you read uh, "My Wife Is a Demon Queen"? No. Nope. It. Without spoiling, I'll just tell you, it is every single trope put into one. It it is it is the king of tropes. That that is that is the story. It's the king of isekai tropes, and it's hilarious to read. I actually highly suggest it. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I'll have to take a look at that. Thank you, Doku. You're also very 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 soft. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hold on. Give me a second. I had to I had to turn up your volume a bit. All right, uh, testing. Am I good? Sound about the same to me. Yeah, you do. Mm-hmm. Son of a bitch! Damn it, Discord. Anyway, but even but even but and obviously the, obviously the main reason that I would wa- that I would want some I would want a second go around is either a um, pull a troll move and and adapt the manga, which would be it. Which would be a mega troll move to do. <laughs> I don't know uh, about the mega troll move. I think that's the best outcome. Yeah. <laughs> well, also, also, it allows me to have an, another anime protagonist that I can make short jokes about. But <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he isn't enough. He and Edward Edward are enough. It's never enough. Look, you know you know the rules. Everybody, everybody it is like short on protagonists. Did you, you just walk... make a short joke out of a short joke? Yes, he walked into that one. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody got the sideshow Bob rate button? Uh, <laughs> as a matter of fact. <laughs> <laughs> he shades. Uh, I'm not going to criticize you. I'm, I'm just going to say I'm taking a drink for that one. I'm not going to say if it's a good drink or a bad drink. I'm just taking a drink. That's all you need to know. Fair. Yeah, of, co- of course you would. Um, <laughs> I can definitely say that there, that, there is one, that there is one particular entry that is, that is going to be my anti-entry for, for this particular topic because I, don't want, because I do not trust any anime studio to get this right again, ever again, and that is Berserk. Uh, yeah, no. no. 2016 anime got it wrong so badly. I am um, just watch the 97 anime. Watch. Nothing else. Even the 97 anime screwed it up a bunch of times. Just watch the gold, the uh, 
the Golden Age movies. They're the only part that's actually good. They're the only ones that were adapted well. I'd say I'd say I'd say that I'd say that's the case in a weekend at Bernie's kind of way. Yes. Mm. The yes. the problem the problem the problem with the with um using with using the Golden Age trilogy is that was animated by Studio 4C and they did a lot of CGing. Their CG compositing was done really well though. Not com- you know, not like the 2016 oh. versions CG monstrosities. Yeah, that <laughs> Now me now um I know somebody might say, "Well, what if it was given to Wit Studio? Would you would you have the same attitude then?" Maybe maybe I'd be a little more willing to let them have a crack at it, but the problem is, too many people have tried and nobody's been able to get it right. And um, also, even though even though it's only been four years, it's still way too soon. People still have the bad taste in their mouth from the 2016 anime. Yeah. The problem mm-hmm. is, another five years, maybe we'll talk. The, the problem I have is that I don't want anybody to try to adapt it until Miura is fucking finished. Yeah. <laughs> Miura, <laughs> Miura, Miura, I'm going to walk out your access to any and all Idol Master games until you finish it. <laughs> so basically, you're saying you never want anyone to adapt because that, that manga will never be done. Star Citizen will be done before that happens. Oh. Oh. No, no, because Star Citizen will never be bu- done, done because it's a con. At least Mira isn't conning us. He's just wrapped up in Idol Master. <laughs> Actually, it would be a better. It would be better to say, please do not pull a Dan and Dave with Game of Thrones and let him finish the fucking source material first before you try uh, to adapt it. Yeah, yeah, that would be nice. Also, why why is why is um George R. R. Martin not in jail? He said he was gonna put himself in jail if he did if Winds of Winter wasn't wasn't out by September. Well, we're almost out of fucking September and he's not in jail. I, at this point in time, I don't I think he's just trying to keep people off his back so he can sit down and enjoy a stupid guy, uh fuck you money. Like I uh... I personally think that it's just because he might still be asleep and hasn't either heard up wake me up heard wake me up until September ends or September by uh, Earth Wind and Fire. Oh, Everybody, bl- I'm not I am not suggesting blaring that outside his house, but um, if you do, please get it on tape so we can shit post about it. Yes, <laughs> yes, please. We would never condone harassment of any sort, so please do not go outside of George R. R. Martin's. Uh, house blaring September. We do not condone that. On the and other hand, if you do, videotape it. And let me know what your twiddle handle is. Uh, twi- twiddle handle. Oh, God. <laughs> Jeez, you really are pounding them tonight. <laughs> Joku, have, you, have you already had too much to drink before you even came into this chat? No, I haven't had enough sleep. Is what I, I need more to drink. I'll actually be talking better. Let me get a beer. <laughs> I think I said that already. Are you? I think we've just confirmed that Doku is a reverse alcoholic. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like he. It's like he gets more coherent the more drunk he is. Yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 wait a Stephen King character. You never know. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if all... I should blame. I should blame either the Scotch, the German, or the Irish. I'm not sure which it is. Okay, the, uh, Scott and German. Uh, yeah. The answer um, is yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I, I would I would say I would say blame the Russians, but um, one somebody somebody's got a dog problem. But one, you um, you don't strike me as a vodka drinker, Doku. And two, what do I look like? MSNBC. <laughs> <laughs> and there is my topical joke for the night. Thank you. Beer and whiskey. Bear and whiskey, Mildred. You know me. You should know this by about me by now. Yeah, Bear I do. I do. Um, but with but with that said, as far as, as Doku, since, since everybody else has gotten has gotten to go at it, what would be one instance of an anime that you'd like to see get a second go? Ooh, you're gonna hate my answer. Try me, darling in the Franks. <laughs> That's uh, not exactly what we're talking about with the Brotherhood effect. 
Oh, no, oh what dear. we're talking about is is an anime that that never that that ended before the manga got a chance to end. Okay, all right, I I get okay, I get the question now. Oh, great, I thought you meant that, 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 just... that disqualifies Escaflone, but I had to put that in simply on goddamn principle. Yeah, oh, and to be fair, Turn of the Franks definitely needs to be retold because that ending, fuck that ending. It, it does. Like it, it, it does. It does. That ending was so underwhelming. Once, once the Verm in space showed up, that was the end. Any time, except for Gurren Lagann, ironically, that Gynax has gone to space, shit goes down. Or not Gynax Trigger, but I mean, it's basically Gynax's, uh, all their old talent, except for Anno, who is still with Gynax. Um, but anytime Trigger has gone to space, unless they started in space, such as with Lululuco, um, it, it has gone to shit. It's also why, probably why they waited until the very end of Kill la Kill to go to space. Yeah, more than likely. It, yeah, I can't disagree there. Uh, but I guess you can see why uh, Darling and the Franks are the first thing that popped in my head when you, uh, when you asked that question. Because, <laughs> God, even if it's just the last five episodes... Just we please, we need to know. We need it. to know more about the robots powered by by teenage sex drives. Yes. 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 <laughs> well, also, uh, uh, sexual powered robots versus aliens, dude. That's an entire second dual core season right there. What the hell's wrong with you people? It is. <laughs> anyway, 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 rails. What? But yep. all right. So choice. So. So an anime that went off the rails because the source material wasn't completed yet. I'm sure you guys have probably all said the good ones at this point in time. So let me pick we my one real quick. Normally I would say... I can't say Outlaw Star though because the follow-up material for that wasn't really enough to, to adjust much. So I can't say Outlaw Star. Uh, damn, this is kind of a rough question. He already said Escaflone. Um, does Record of the Lotus War actually even have source material? We already brought it up. Damn it. It does. <laughs> and we already brought it up. <laughs> Damn it. See, I've, I've already jinxed myself on this one. <laughs> okay, they had gone through everything until I got my turn because I also came in later. Uh, I had a friend's stream to attend for their birthday. And. Uh, I brought up. I even brought up something like X nineteen ninety nine. Okay, let me bring up. Okay, I swear, if you guys said "Oh my goddess" already, I'm gonna. We have nope. actually. We have not gotten that one yet. Nope. Okay. Okay. I'd, um, I would. I would go. I would go with that on one condition. Not take this. Not take as much sweet ass time as the manga does. Oh, that's fair. Because, well, the manga has a problem where they flip flop between, and I remember this because I've. I was in the fucking comic shop. I remember where it was. It was in Texas. There's the manga, and then there's what they decided to create as far as Americans don't buy manga, so let's sell them normal comic books, and everything just gets lost in translation. It's a clusterfuck. You don't even know what story's going on. But if we're sticking to just the manga, yeah, uh, I, would, I would like to see All oh My Goddess get another shot. Now, I, me I remember the last time it got a full-on anime series was um, was decent. Um, the it was all right. The, the big problem they... that I've had the big problem that I've had I've had when it com when it comes to when it comes to something like Oh My Goddess is because I because I do remember reading a fair amount of amount of the manga and it is paced so slow. Oh, it is. It's definitely. It's a situation where you're going to have to cut uh, cut content just to keep the pacing up, just for the sake of the way the jokes are set up. Well, and and uh, my my personal pet peeve about that entire series. Um, can can we please call Verdandy Verdandy instead of Bell Dandy? Can we call her by her proper fucking name? Well, there's there's that. What irritates me about the uh, the anime adaptation of the manga. <laughs> is they underutilize two characters and they happen to be my two favorite characters in the entire fucking series. Why do I get the feeling one of them is Erd? No, <laughs> although I do love Erd is my third favorite. Porth, who has a lot more content that they just completely leave out of the anime. And then Hild. 
Hild huh. is easily my favorite character in that entire series. And they she and she gets some good parts, but it's it read the manga. Hild is easily the best character in that entire series. You cannot change my mind. I'm noticing it between between that between that and Pirates, I'm starting to notice a pattern with you, Doku. <laughs> Oh, what? I, I like characters that tend to be uh, lovable, dark, mischievous, and uh, have a bit of an evil streak in them that you wouldn't pick up on normally. <laughs> and can, also a certain uh, dark skin, so, uh, silver hair aesthetic. Can, can, yeah. can, we, can we just call it out for what it is? Hey, dude, uh. I'm sorry. Uh, the dark skin, silver, uh, silvered hair aesthetic is hot, and the personality makes it even better. Okay, also, you yes. yes, personality. <laughs> I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure you also play Dead or Alive for the plot. <laughs> actually, ironically enough, I do try to play through all of the uh, all the storylines just so I can actually try to see if there is a plot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and he <laughs> finds all of the plot. It is well, Dead or Alive. Uh, Dead or Alive Four actually did have a plot to it. It wasn't a good one, <laughs> but there was one. Well, well, clones. There, well when in doubt, also, clones. It's always clones. Well, yeah, and yeah, and um, go and going with some S and K level bullshit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. you know exactly what I'm talking about with <laughs> yeah. that end boss, and I, I had to, I had that, I had to beat that end boss like thirty times in order to unlock everything. Yeah, yeah, dead or alive. Uh, actually, no, fighting games in general kind of do that for you, and. It do- no. it does happen a lot with fighting games, but that one is egregious because again, SNK boss syndrome. Yeah, yeah. Even, uh, even Blaze Blue and Guilty Gear having the super versions of normal characters as bosses, they they aren't extremely unfair. Such as like Super Eno from Guilty Gear X Two. See, the, but, see uh, something like that, the- I'm perfectly fine with. It's exactly. when you go and it's when you go into full on bullshit that mm-hmm. I take that I take an issue. See, oh, nothing is bullshit. Nothing is as bad as fucking Tengu. Like um, why? Yori? I I would like to I would like to raise you one. Geese. Uh, fuck you, yeah. fuck you uh, and geese. Fuck you in Final Fight. <laughs> We're talking no matter about- what game no matter what game he's in, Geese Howard always manages to find a way to make me rage. Even just see even just seeing him in even just seeing him make a cameo in tech and made me pissed. That's how oh, much I hate that, him. But, I know we're uh, we're off on a rail here, real quick. Yeah, the only we, thing I was gonna say, the reason I brought up Tengu, is just why. Just what 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 purpose? What purpose does he serve? Why why is he in the game at all? Have because. I mentioned that Itagaki is the Japanese Tommy Wiseau? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not. I'm not gonna challenge you there. Actually, I concede. But to the, to that to that particular end, um, now when now um, there I know that I remember some I remember someone once su- once suggesting to me that um, possibly one possibly one that should get that should get another go just to do a be- just to do a better ending was Wolf's Rain. I don't quite agree with that. Um, I think the I think the ending we got with Wolf Rain was the was the best we were gonna get out of that. I'm not saying I liked the ending. I'm just I'm just saying that um, I can't I can't think I um I can't think of a way to do it be, to do it better without it feel without feeling um, half assed. Um, but I'm, but I'm trying to th- I'm trying to think of an instance of a of a um, B train anime that I would that I wouldn't mind see get a get a second go- get a um a second go and actually get it right. The problem is there's not a whole there there's not the only one I could possibly think of. And you and you know I'm and you know I'm stretching things in this regard is dot hack roots. Mm. Sim- most mostly because, mostly because ah. of the fact that I get the I get what Roots was trying to do, especially since it was basically trying to be the sign for the R two era. Problem is it um 
wasn't a, it wasn't very good. Actually, mm -hmm. go. focused way too much on a character that wasn't even a major part of the games, and this whole story got <clears throat> pretty much sidetracked because of it and completely derailed. Do you now, want to know the reason I couldn't watch Roots? Do you want to know the reason? Shoot. It wasn't even the same voice actors as in the game. It's just, it sounds small. It sounds a bit petty. I acknowledge both of, both of those things. But I at least want a little bit of fucking continuity, please. Just that little bit of continuity. Fair. At that at that point, I couldn't even I couldn't even enjoy it, and I was I was now, watching I, it. I know so, I know some people I know some people are gonna gonna say, but 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 sign didn't fo sign didn't focus on any of the characters in the games. That's true, and that's actually and that was actually to its benefit. Roots, however, was trying to be a direct prequel to the GU trilogy. Well, not well. Now it's a quartet because of what because of what was add, added in the remake. But you get my point. Mm -hmm. But the but um by making it by making it a by making it a prequel in that in that regard, it meant um. it um was going to restrain what could be done. It also was going it also was going to rest. Let's be honest. The big driving force when it came to what when it came to watching Sign was the was the mystery surrounding Sukasa. Yep. With um, <clears throat> Roots, we really we really didn't have that we really didn't have that kind of mystery. Hell, Haseo, Haseo's whole journey started out as the as as the as um wrong as wrong place wrong time. What with it? What with what with him being what with him being seen with, with him being seen with with Ovan and then everything spiraling out from there. The problem is you have a pro, you have a protagonist who's a little, a little too a little too passive in that regard. Um, it's it's not so much that Sukasa uh, or excuse me um. Uh, Haseo, in. Gu was always going to be who he was going to be, mm -hmm. whether he had been seen with Ovan or not, because he was Sora, the person hacked and turned into Scathe in World R One. Uh, it, it's the same player. Rio is the same yeah. player for both characters, so yes. he was always fated to become the new Scathe. Oh, okay. I don't know how this didn't come to my mind. I got one for you guys. Shoot. D. Gray man. Yeah. Yeah, Ugh. I I um I can I can go with that. I I think that's the best the best one that I think hasn't that probably hasn't been brought up already is probably D. Gray man, and I think that's probably the closest thing I can get to to FMA and FMA Brotherhood is D. Gray man. Dead. Cause that season three was just what the hell? <laughs> no. Now it's been a while since D Gray Man, but was but wasn't it a case of um, we don't have it, we don't have any um, ma we don't have any of the manga to work with, so let's just wing it, or was or would you say it was bigger shenanigans? Uh, there was season one and two that they definitely had enough to work with, and then season three was they kind of knew the direction it was going, but they just said, well. There's not enough for a full dual core uh, dual core arc here, so uh, fuck it. <laughs> we'll use bits and pieces and just kind of try to make it fit. But it's it. As far as I'm concerned, it ends at season two, and that still doesn't explain anything about the level four Akuma at all whatsoever. They, they and I, I don't know what they did. <laughs> it's shenanigans. I can see that. Yeah, so can I. Mm -hmm. And also, they still barely tell you anything about uh, the Noahs and the Millennium Earl and exactly why they're out to, uh, quote, quote, destroy the world. They barely even tell you our Alan Walker's uh, actual true origin and backstory or why he uh, did the things that he did without going into spoiler territory. And... D. Grayman really does deserve a reboot, just so they can do it properly. As long as we can, as long as we can get ab, 
Albingyan Boys School to um, do another opening. Albingyan, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or at the very least, get you know Nishikawa himself to do something because that's his oh. group anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, D. Grayman also to this day still has one of my favorite openings. I. Well, how the fuck do you go wrong with TM Revolution? Come on. Exactly. That's true. TM Revolution is uh, well, yes. Hell, TM. You can only TM say the word Gundam yes. Seed tolerable. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Let's 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 correct that. TM Revolution made the first minute and a half of Gundam Seed episodes bearable. Oh, and also, I know this isn't a reboot and it doesn't fit into the Brotherhood effect. This is more of just something that deserves a season two. I want season two of those who hunt elves. Make it happen. <laughs> Are you saying now, that sol now, solely to play on my, solely to play on my hatred of elves? <laughs> I don't know. I just thought that show was funny. I, but maybe. <laughs> I was I was saying. Um, Monk, he's using your own techniques against you of knowing your audience. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you guys stole Lotus War. Like, damn, I should have been here earlier. Because that would have been my first pick. Mostly just because I want more. I want more of it. Especially Beld. I want Beld's full backstory. Mm-hmm. It's, I can I can definitely I can definitely um wrap some sense out of that. Yeah. But I think I think the I think the I think the overall message when it when it comes to when it comes to all of these is the simple fa the simple fact that there's a that um there's a lot of un there's a lot of untapped potential that's gone that's gone on note that's gone unnoticed and I think it would behooves I would I think it would behoove to de to delve deeper into some of these. Um I will note the I there is one there is one uh, there is one other that I will that I will note. Um and this will be my this will be my final one for the night. And the sole reason this ended up being um, brought to my attention was because of an article because of an article where it was stated that the manga is only a few <laughs> chapters away, which away from being done, which surprised me because I thought I thought the manga had finished a long time ago. But hey. you know what I know, yeah, DN Angel, yeah. Although it, although I will say. Um, Okay, first off, let me cover my ass. Is Zabek still around? No. They they got bought out last year, I believe. So if somebody gives them if somebody takes another crack at DN Angel, let's uh, not let have they, let's not have anybody related to Zabek handle it because the prob the problem that I have the problem that I have with Zabek is the problem that a lot of people have with them. They're um yep. Their art, out last day. Anyway, their art style tends to be a little samey across yeah. their properties. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's not a bit it's not a bad art style. I will I will note, but when you see that same art style acro across diff across different properties that have nothing to do with each other, it ten you it tends to be something that you're not unseeing. And then I, then I see an article that says that the manga is only a few chapters away from being finished. And much like when Oda has said this kind of thing over the years, I'll believe it when I fucking see it. Yeah. <laughs> like how, how many times has he how many times has he talked about how close he is to being done over the last twenty years? Yeah. Um, and I just, I, and I, I lied. There was one other that I feel, I feel I need to, I feel I need to cover because even though it finished, um, I think we, I think it need, I think it needs another, I think it could use an, a, another go. Um, I was 50, 50 on the devil may cry anime. Mm. And I think now, I think now would be a real good time just for somebody to try again, just so we have an excuse to get. <laughs> To get the gang further together. Mm-hmm. 
And if you if you're ask if you're saying the, the ending was a little underwhelming from yeah. what I remember of it. It's been a while since I've watched the anime, mind you, in full. Now, if you're if you're asking that if you're asking that I that I although truth be told, instead of trying to do a bunch of original stories, what I'd rather them what I'd rather them do actually is um adapt one of the novels. Ooh. Specifically, specifically one of the novels, so we can, so we can, so um, either the not the novels or some or some of the mangas, so we can get a bit of we can get a bit of insight on Dante when he was still known as Tony Redgrave. Oh yeah, that alias. Now, grant now granted, that's me digging deep. That's me digging deep into lore, but um. Given my fondness for Devil May Cry, I think I think I'm justified. That's lore that's confirmed in five too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, it was also kind of conf kind of confirmed in the in the anime because if you look at the um, eye catches for um, Ebony and Ivory, it does have engraved on it for Tony Redgrave. Yeah. But I do think. The part of the re part of the reason I bring those up, it, those not those novels up, is even if his even if his face was completely wrapped in bandages, that was an early look at Virgil. Mm hmm. So, of course, if something like this happened, you you can bet your ass that I'd want these I'd want the same um, the same dub actors. Because of course. Let let's be honest. If anybody other than Ruben Langdon plays Dante, that's going to start a riot. Especially, no, go ahead. I was going to say at this point, if anyone tries to play Dante besides Ruben Langdon, that'll start a riot. If anyone besides Daniel Southworth tries to play Virgil, that'll start a riot. Um, yeah. And I think, and I'm pretty sure that if anyone bes besides Johnny Young Bosch tries to play Nero, that'll start a riot. Oh. They're like, they're they're no not just iconic. It's an it's they are the only ones who can perform the idiosyncrasies of those characters. Mm -hmm. Hell, at least for a new anime, Ruben can actually perform perform under his actual name, not a pseudonym. Because in 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 the original in in the, in the anime, in, if you look in the voice cast that they list in the anime, he went under the pseudonym Justin Cause. Yes, he went there. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, he'd, of, course he'd, he did there. of course he'd do that. Um, I had I ended up having a bit of a back and forth with with Ruben on Twitter once about cups. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that's 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 Ruben. That's Ruben. Yeah, that, that's that, that's Ruben. And yeah, he's um, he definitely strikes me as a as someone who's very much a shit poster. <laughs> he does. That's Ruben. Um, but with the, but with that in with that in mind, even if even if this was a a uh, more chaotic affair, um, I think I think we ended up getting a decent spread of of shows that can, that could do with that could do with a second go around. And with that with that in mind, a sincere thanks goes out to everybody who is going to be watching this and enjoy and enjoying our drunken insanity. Even if some of us aren't drunk enough, I don't know what you're talking about. Stop lying. <laughs> I'm gonna send an elf for you. Three. <laughs> I'm gonna send you a high elf, a wood elf, and a dark elf. God damn it! I wish I had my camera on right now so you could see how hard I'm flipping you off. Oh, see, it's gonna be great. the The high elf is gonna be a princess, but she's gonna be the bratty type. The wood elf is going to be a vegan, and the dark elf is going to be a mute. Wow. I mean, let's just stack all the normal tropes for them on. Hey, you know, it seems to be the running theme for all Isek guys. That was the first thing I heard. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to put it this way. I'm going I'm to put it this way. Um, do not surprise me when Monk shows up at your door with a with a uh, a twelve gauge loaded with a double lot buckshot. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> have I not as long as he brings me a, as long as he brings me a beer first, so I can have one last drink, then it'll be perfectly fine, and it'll be worth it. 
Um, you know, you know that what I'd pro what I'd probably do is fi is find a way to to, fi to fire beer cans from a rotary grenade launcher. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Just the cans, though. Torture him with empty beer cans. Okay, now that's just cruel. That's that is tyranny. That is cruel and unusual punishment. I'm going to uh, the UN Security Council. I do not approve of this. <laughs> so uh, the monk is, the monk is a private citizen, and um, as such, UN UN sanctions don't apply to him. He's also not the government, anyway. so neither does the, the the Eighth Amendment. All right, that, you know You're what? Both. Fuck it. Uh, screw it. I'm isekaiing all of you. <laughs> am I gonna? Am and I gonna walk with these guys? Am I gonna walk? Am I gonna yeah, walk out in the middle yeah, of the, with me. in the middle of the street and then get ambushed by Truck Coon? Truck Coon. <laughs> <laughs> truck. Take it up three sets of stairs to reach me. Screw Someone you. Someone call the IIIS to get the Isekai Investigation Squad. <laughs> Although oh, you do, you do realize that if Truck Coon goes after me, I'm gonna end up showing up at your house, um, <laughs> even even more pissed off, looking like Brock Samson. <laughs> hey, truck. I, I could see you be. I could see you being a Brock Samson. You know what? I just realized something. Stephen King predicted Issei Kai and Truck Coon. I hate you. No, 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 no none of that. Shame on you. Uh, I regret nothing. You know, Come I would say Christine. the reason why I'm not saying shame on you, Doku, is because you have no shame. Yeah, fair enough. I was gonna say shame. What the hell is that? What what language of English are you speaking? So, so wait, you're telling me that um that Weird Al's parody of Happy applies to Doku? I never would have guessed. Look at my surprised Pikachu face. <laughs> Nani? I don't think we're on enough. I don't think we're on enough layers of irony here. So we need a truck and a 1950s Cadillac. Gotcha. No, we just need more irons. No, that'll work, actually. If we yeah. smooth out all the wrinkles, there'll be more more room for layers. So just iron some more. Nah, replace it with a guitar. And scissors. <laughs> a guitar that is made out of scissors. Someone call Studio Trigger. I just figured out what their next pitch is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to laugh if you throw it at them and they'll be like, yeah, we've already got one of those in the works. <laughs> you know, honestly, it wouldn't surprise me. A and robot, you... a robot wielding a guitar made out of scissors fighting. Well, we've, we've already had, we've already had, we've already had guitar wielding robots. I mean, we had one in Gal Gygar. Oh, yeah. yeah. Also... Yep. <clears throat> <laughs> but, it's not outside the realm of possibility. That's yeah. the disturbing part. But just remember that Mike Sounders turned the entire London fucking bridge into a guitar. <laughs> yep. I love Too you, bad. Final. The the some of the set pieces in Final, ugh, just the the Sakuga was dripping with epicness. But with that said, I think I think that's going to wrap it up for this particular edition of Geek Watch. We'll be back here next Sunday with a with a little something that I, I like I like to call us fucking around way too much with the life path generator in Cyberpunk 2020 just oh, a Jesus. few days before Cyberpunk 2077 comes out. Yes, <laughs> and Ghost Runner. <laughs> oh, Ghost Runner. There's the there's the asterisk and the uh, and the and the uh, footnote. Not to not to disrespect Ghost Runner, but um, look, I'm I'm gonna end up getting both games. You know that. <laughs> I already have Ghost Runner and Cyberpunk pre-ordered. I know exactly how you feel. Mm -hmm. But speaking of Cyberpunk, tomorrow night I will be hosting the cyber the Cyberpunk edition of the Big Brain Panel, bringing back the bringing back the Wrong Brothers, Mark Everglade. Yes, that is his name. Shades. Yes, I made a Florida joke about it. <laughs> but does that mean that Mark Everglade is 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 Florida man? No, no. Oh, that just makes me sad. Look, He's got I'm the just, name I'm to just, be Florida man. Look, all I'm, all I'm saying is that you 
when you when you have a last name with like Everglade, you kind you kind of um, walk into that kind of thing. Yeah, but he's he's suited to be a, the superhero version of Florida Man. He wasn't born in Florida, so it doesn't count. <laughs> you know what? That still probably doesn't mean that he won't pick up a crocodile by the tail and smack you across the head with it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think you can aim that high. Um, oh. and of, of course, I'll have Opti um, back as well. We'll be t we'll be talking about we'll be talking about Cyberpunk as a whole. Um, Tuesday, unless something changes, Jeff D will be coming back, and we'll have an opportunity to talk about Tecumel and why that is a very very underrated series, especially if you like your de especially if you like detailed material. Um, Wednesday, unless something changes, I will have J Scott Rumps back on. Since he is he is relaunching his bo his board game Nexus, um, Thursday, I am going to try for the third time to have Andrew Gilmore on, and hopefully something won't fuck up this time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you much. Um, oh, he's got a knock on wood when you say that. Yep, Friday. Unless something changes, I will have Casey Reardon on. Um, he d he does he does a lot of pro GMing kind of stuff, so I'll have an opportunity to talk about his GMing philosophies. Um, Saturday, of course, is the Gazette. Unless something changes, and Sunday we return for Geek Watch. So that's how things are going to be going. Um, I will be posting the Octo the October review list fairly shortly. Um, one of them, I probably am going to have to make a bit shoot exclusive because of its artwork. Oh. Um, <laughs> because one of them is going to be Cult Divinity Lost, which, if you do a Google search for that, you'll um, see why. And for and for the for the rest, October, I'm doing. I'm not. I'm doing horror adjacent things. I'm not. I'm not going to be going full spooky cliches, but. That's what we got coming down the pipe. And of course, there's probably going to be more insanity as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, and join the watch. <laughs>